special for you this week. I have something oh, really I'm special excited. for you this week. Yes. I love being given gifts. Yes. Uh, I, I, and so let me give you the gift of what I think might be the first time in a long time that you and I are going to do just a regular Rage Select podcast. Like, <laughs> there's no gigantic conference. There's no, like, huge info dump. TGS is going on, but it's not that kind of, not that kind of show, you know? Right. We got a couple things. We got a new Smash character. We got some general industry news, but, like, it's just no. I'm excited for it yeah I we're not talking about like a 20 new game announcements that we saw five seconds of this is mm-hmm. great this is a good lineup today yes yes <laughs> so welcome everybody back to a very regular rage select podcast here at rage select i'm jeff hi i'm bryce and before we start bryce i have it is october and uh i have a spooky scary story to tell everybody <laughs> please so um i don't i don't know I, i've never talked about this because it's the most mundane thing but about three to five months ago i got pantry moths do you know pantry <gasps> moths uh if i i can context clues can tell me that that didn't sound good i'll tell you that yeah there are a bunch of moths in my pantry and i was like what's up moths so i i started buying like little glue traps because you don't want to put a bunch of poison in your pantry uh you know i bought a bunch of glue traps from amazon i put them up they'd fill up with moths i'd throw throw them away i'd get more moth traps i'd put them in there and the moths just kept staying and i was like well what's going on here um mm-hmm. and that was because like a dumb dumb I looked up uh like how like what what's up with pantry moths and they're like, Well, you probably bought a thing of flour that had a bunch of moth eggs in it and then they hatched and they're in the flour. Throw your flour away. And I was like, Okay, well I threw away the thing I just bought, but everything in my pantry is in a plastic bag or it's in a sealed container. Like yeah. it seems like it would take a long time for some you would have to have something that has a really something very old in your pantry to generate moths i was i mean even like fresh flour like even if you get flour that has moth eggs in it it would still take a while for them to emerge yes uh but last week i decided to do the thing and i went into my pantry to the top shelf where i keep all the crap that i don't use on a regular basis and i started pulling it out and i started opening it up and like i had a thing of steel cut oats and i opened it up and it was <gasps> moth town usa in there just oh, like no. a billion moths uh, all crawling around uh and i had everything oh. of flour that i had had moths in it everything of sugar that i had had moths in it uh i had these like sealed bags of like legumes and stuff because oh. um because of the pandemic and you know you think you're gonna have to ride out the apocalypse and i started looking in there and and I was like, I don't see any moss. Oh, no, there's a bunch of larvae at the bottom that are all like squirming around and eating and getting ready to turn into moths. So, um, yeah, if you get pantry well, moths. <laughs> yeah, because they'll lay eggs. So, like, like it, it's tough to get them. But once you get them, they spread and they re- they reproduce really bad. Like, I, I've, I've got a friend who had... Um, uh, closet moths mm-hmm. you know uh, in his in his clothes and it was this huge ordeal to get rid of them because even if they try to spray or if they try to whatever treat the clothes like they get in there and they'll stay in there and they'll lay they'll lay eggs in there so so w- did you so you got rid of the infected did you, did you just get rid of everything i just threw everything How away I, I threw everything away that wasn't like a like a can or like a super sealed container like anything that was just plastic sealed i was like nah i got rid of everything that was in a can and then i bought a bunch of like vacuum sealed containers off of amazon and started putting everything into vacuum sealed containers and so it, it still is going to take like two weeks for them to all starve to death and then i'm probably gonna there's probably something up there like there's a can with the hole in it or i don't i don't know uh but yeah you never want to go into your pantry and find like a whole bunch of little larvas and moths and stuff hanging out in there. It's pretty gross. Ugh, now that, no, no, you made me. No, <laughs> you, this is this is the right type of horror where you think, oh, that could happen to me. Uh, my my only like major food um, crime in that same sense is when I was in college. I must have been, God, I want to say in my second or third year. 
I was in like a little four person dorm, right? And so everyone had a room and a common area and a little kitchen area. And I guess sometime near the start of the year, I bought potatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then about halfway through the year, I did find those potatoes. <laughs> and uh, not only had they grown, you know, little eyes and roots and stuff, they were like actually melting. There was like goo. There was like liquid <laughs> in the bag with these potatoes mm-hmm. because they had been just stored away for so long. And it was it was it was nasty. That I don't need Resident Evil or like Shinji Murakami. Like, give me, give me potato horror, because that's that's my that's real life potato horror. <laughs> yep. So that's been my life outside of just watching watching all the animes. I'm watching every anime now, and um, and that's that's pretty much what I'm up to. Have you been doing anything interesting over the last? Uh, I guess you and I haven't done this in a, a, like a month or longer. It's but been about a month. Yeah. Uh, I actually have started doing something, and I I knew a, the second I started doing it that you would be maybe the only person I know of to really who would be really excited about playing it. Dark is, Souls. Um, is you playing Dark Souls finally? Cl- close. Uh, I. Uh, so I'm all and people who've heard me like, no, I'm kind of a I'm in on Sony and the PlayStation stuff. And I was looking in my Steam library and I saw, oh, I have the first chat ma- chapter of Hitman 2. Um, and if I'm going to and they, you know, we talked before about Hitman 3 and they're having cross progression and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm going to buy into Hitman, then I need to make the decision and I need to pick one and stick with it. So I went and bought uh, the Hitman 1 and 2 bundle on playstation 4 and i've been doing weekly streams where i'm going to 100 percent all of him in one and two Yowza. the challenges the mastery stuff um it it's it's interesting and and the the big thing that you realize is how easy it would be for someone we've i know I, listeners know exactly what i'm gonna say jeff is that mm-hmm. it's very easy to run through those games and mm-hmm. not understand what's going on but when you spend 30 hours in in Paris doing the during the fashion show, you see all of the pieces. You mm-hmm. see all. Oh, that's that's the guy from the, the tutorial was mentioned. That guy. Oh, this person comes up uh, later in, in the campaign. Oh, this part, you know, all of these little connections. And it's great. Oh, my God. It's perfect. It's, that's the way that you should play the game. They should they, they make up. So I'm playing through all through, through the Hitman 2 package because they remastered all of those right. levels or they retouched them whatever um and i don't remember if they did this in hitman one but when you finish a a mission for the first time and you use one of the story missions they even make a point of like hey you should like track one of these other ones and just play this level again to Mm -hmm. get the full story um which is really smart that's really like that that box should be much bigger on screen of like you should replay this level a lot because it is really interesting a lot of really interesting facets there you know all of this character development stuff that you wouldn't normally get in an open world and kind of open path sort of designed system you get when you hear conversations oh actually these two are having you know conflict whatever like it, it it's Man, god damn, it's, it's it's only made me more excited for Hitman 3. Uh. <laughs> it uh like it's funny that you talk about Paris because Paris is not like it's not my most favorite Hitman level, but the thing is if you don't do the Helmet Kruger subquest, the fact that Agent 47 looks like Helmet Kruger comes up it comes up in like Hokkaido. It comes up in a bunch of other places where people are like, is that Helmut Kruger? And not having that connection is just going to like having the connection is going to make it better through the entire game. Like in Hitman in in Hitman one in Hokkaido. I mean, I'm, I know that you did a lot of Hitman one. Um, you just didn't do I, like uh, full mastery, I, right? No, I actually did not do a lot of Hitman one. I okay. only I think I only ever did play a little bit of sapienza so that's where i'm at now with my streaming stuff mm. is I'm, I'm 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 still probably a few weeks away from hitting whatever even level three is but i'm this is all f- basically brand new to me because i i i really dig hit man and i also never dived in <laughs> there is a there is a moment in one of the later levels when you're at a hospital and there's a guy there who is getting plastic surgery to look like Helmut Kruger who sees you and gets really mad that you've stolen his idea. And it's like one of the flavor quests that you can do to get access to this area. And I'm just like, 
how is this game? I mean, I keep talking about it because I feel like I know that the people that like it like it a lot, but I don't feel like it's got a really wide acceptance. And I think it's one of the best games. Like I, I really put it up there with mm-hmm. like Dark Souls and stuff about I've never seen another game do open world as well as this. I've never seen a game do episodic like when Hitman 1 came out. The fact that it was episodic meant that you just had this one level for a month until the next one came out. So, of course, you just played it over and over and over again. And, I, yeah, I just I think it's incredible. Um, and everybody should play it. So, good it's, job, Bryce. It's great. <laughs> hey! I'm on the just even doing the trick, like, before I decided to even do the do it as like a stream i was trying to do 100 percent with the like the training mission you know uh, the, the final test and mm-hmm. all that stuff and so you get it you get a handle of the cuba mission and the the yacht mission and you're like okay i got this i could even do you know oh i can do silent assassin suit only it's just just like that just go whoop, 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 whoop. and then you play paris and like paris has 100 challenges and you're like oh my god this has exploded so much and then you finish paris and you go to sapienza and it's like 200 challenges it, yep. it's it's so g- generous is a, is a great way to describe it because there's so much in there and so many different ways to play it's 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 really um a lot of fun. Are you? I don't so. want to. I don't want to add work to your plate. But are you doing the escalations as well? No, I've decided. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm doing those a little more off the stream. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really focusing in on doing the challenges. I know that some of the challenges are tied into doing a certain number of escalations. So maybe maybe I'll do those as needed. But um, but also doing the escalations really shows how flexibly designed that those levels are Mm -hmm. where you can make challenges of hey get rid of this random npc and then adding like okay well now only do it in this disguise only do it in this amount of time right um it's 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 really cool it's really cool and um i'm i'm really excited to uh to keep playing more and figuring out all of the world of assassination. There you go. I can't. I can't think of a better thing to do. If you got a lot of time and you need one of those games, is going to take a billion hours, and you got Hitman Three right around the corner. So, yeah. um, well, I tell you what, we do have sort of a big thing, but not. I mentioned Tokyo Game Show 2020 is going on, and there's some stuff. There is some stuff here. It's not a lot of stuff, though. This is mostly like reiterating things that we've already heard about i mean there were a couple new trailers like we talked maybe we can kick it off with last week uh michael and i we were started recording the podcast right around the time that they did the uh near replicant trailer and i know like you are the one who got me to finish near automata uh so i maybe we could start by going kind of a little bit backwards and getting your thoughts Mm -hmm. on this near replicant uh trailer that they put out there wasn't a lot to it but are you excited for near replicant this is um and correct me on this because i I, because this is the remake of the original near game yes um i i i would be like this trailer is another kind of teaser trailer we we see a little bit of combat and stuff but um the the thing that i would want to know more about near replicant going in is um, what is the goal of this remake? Is it to be very faithful to the original game or is it to kind of quality of life it and make it feel a little more like Nier Automata, um, which was a little m- more honed in on its action where near the original Nier was more, it was like almost a bullet hell type of game in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. I, I, but I, I, I think that there's, there are really great stories in the original Nier and, um, the format of it is like is fascinating. Like if you think Near Automata is cool with how it handles playthroughs and stuff, like Near kind of ratches it up a little bit more. Like when you, um, I, I won't talk any specifics, but when you when you New Game Plus in Near, uh, you spend the first like thirty or forty minutes just reading a novel. You are reading a novelization of a character's backstory, and it's great. Oh my god, is it great? But <laughs> It's it's that kind of stuff where there's a lot of story in there, and um, I would like that to be accompanied with, you know, more polishing. I think Platinum did such a really good job with Automata that the bar is very high for this for this replicant remake. Did did you play much of the original Near? 
I didn't. I've listened to um, I listened to this podcast called Watch Out for Fireballs, and they did a whole retrospective where they went over the story to it, and they were really kind of um, down on the combat. They, they said it was very just tedious. That was just kind of yep. a very tedious system, and um, so that's what I'm hoping for the most out of Replicant is that you know they go back and and do some stuff to make the combat feel better. Um, because the story sounded really interesting, but it's one of those things. I feel like there's a lot of Japanese games where the story seems really interesting, but the gameplay kind of is like something you put up with. Like it's not your favorite gameplay, um, which, yeah. So I, that's what I'm hoping yeah. for. I don't really know. Um, I guess we'll see. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's a thing where, you know, platinum stepping in and making automata, and making all of that combat super fast and, you know, very, you know, a lot of the um, parrying and dodging and stuff like mm. that's what that game needed. And I think that's what the original Nier would really benefit from. Yeah. Well, uh, what about we also got a trailer for the uh, Nier reincarnation, which I think you and I talked about before the phone game that they're making. Um, yes. I feel like you were like kind of. Uh, like I like near I don't know that I really want to play it on a phone the last time we talked about this uh no I I would I would give it a try I would like to I, I would like to know m- more about this game I this I don't know if you if if I'm repeating myself here that's fine <laughs> but it's like it, it, uh, the near universe is so ripe for really interesting stories about humanity or post-humanity um settings there's uh, there's there's even there there are written novelas not novelizations but like actual canonical texts that they've written that mm-hmm. take place between automata and near that don't really affect either of the games very much and those are super super fascinating there's there's a lot of uh, of really cool stuff that you can tell in the near world I just need a I I just need to stop seeing floaty images of scenes and I need to see what the game is. Okay, yeah, that I mean that totally makes sense. That's the other it's kind of the other problem with a lot of the stuff that was put out here is that, you know, full-on Japanese story trailers don't really tell you a whole lot. Um and like I said, a lot of the stuff we knew about like the Saga collection I think was in a Nintendo Direct where they're putting out the the Saga games and this like really like super retro Game Boy package. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff. What what did anything catch your catch your eye when you looked at some of these trailers? I think there are a few here. Like I'm super excited that Gal Gun is getting remastered and coming back as Gal Gun returns because Gal Gun is ridiculous, and I kind of want another excuse to play it. Uh, are you? Is that? Do you like Gal Gun or do you like the spectacle of Gal Gun? Because. I, the the latter, I, it is definitely the okay. latter. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, as far as the rest of the stuff, um, it, the, what is the the Balam uh, platformer game, Balan Wonderworld? That seems uh, very strange. Um, the idea of 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 Square Enix publishing a pl- an, a character platformer game like this. Yeah, this one is weird. I mean, from the moment that I saw it, it just seemed a little bit too twee. Like, uh, it, it, it reminds me a lot of um, Knights, I guess, for some reason. Like, just very colorful, very cutesy, and I don't know. It just, I mean, it doesn't really appeal to me very much, <laughs> to Well, be honest, I mean, but. It, it, supposedly this is the Knights uh, creator, uh, doing this for for Square, I I I don't know. I'm um, I we'll talk about some more later. But I I could be talked into a good 3D platformer a little bit. I I could be talked into that if if it's fun, right? Mm-hmm. It, it does have to be good. But I, I could be talked into something whimsical. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I'm just trying to think of some of the other stuff. Like so much of this stuff uh, was in other places or these are just updates like i keep seeing there's a lot of news about um scarlet nexus which was i believe originally announced at the ps5 event where it was like the anime characters running around fighting kind of weird looking monsters um oh this was this was at the the 
that, that Microsoft one. This was the Microsoft oh. third party keynote. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, which I this is a really weird one because the trailers are very, <laughs> excuse me, a very bombastic. But um, uh, they've just like there was actually an interview that I was reading where they said they're mostly been focusing on the action, but then there's also going to be a lot of uh, like kind of RPG elements and like talking to people in your party and getting to know people. There's going to be stuff happening between all of this kind of generic looking. This game makes me think of Code Vein. And I didn't get Code Vein. Like Code Vein just ended up being a lot of weird action that that didn't satisfy me when I was playing it. And so, mm -hmm. like, no matter how good you make these third person character action games look, a lot so much is going to depend on how it actually feels when you're playing it. And then if you can make me care, because if you, if if I don't care, then it doesn't matter how bombastic the action is. I don't care about what's going on. So. Uh, yeah. But there were a few things. There's like a music video that they put out for this. Um, I I have a hard time getting an idea of like, is this going to be more of a tales of like action RPG style game, or is this is this actually like a monster hunter kind of uh, old, open world sort of hunting game? Um, it's probably closer to the latter or the former. The first one, it's probably closer to like a Tales of game, um, but I, I guess you can't go wrong with those games, right? Those seem like if if it's hacking and slashing, um, man, I don't know. I, don't know. I think it's, it's so just, I have I have the aesthetically, I have no interest. I guess in this like super cell shaded look, even with like this kind of grungy sci fi uh, setting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They, they, this is one that needs like a story trailer or something because I've read about it and it's in you know the future. Certain number of humans get telekinesis uh, or like t t telepathic powers, and then these weird demons from another dimension show up and start eating everybody with a telekinetic brain. And so you got to create these these uh, teenage commando telekinesis warriors to go it's very anime it's just standard anime 101 and so yeah it's gonna be you and your friends having an epic adventure but so much of that it's like any third person action game it depends on the execution i think that's why you know that's why platinum is so popular is because they tend to do very well when it comes to the execution of a third person action game and so a lot of this is just going to depend on how strong is the initial story hook? How does it feel in your hands? Because I've tried playing. What's that? Um, like God Eater? Is that that like kind of monster mm -hmm. huntery future one? I've tried playing that a bunch of times, and I just keep bouncing off of it because it's a little too obtuse, it's a little too generic, and I just don't really care that much about what's going on in it. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it just it. I I hate painting with a wide brush, but that kind of just almost generic action jrpg g entire genre just like really bounce i bounce off of it because mm -hmm. i i have such a hard time just falling into into those worlds yeah i think a few of the other things that were interesting was um they had this announcement that shin megami tensei 3 nocturne hd is going to after post release get a dlc for a mode called merciful mode which apparently i didn't know this but the original shimigami tensei 3 has a um has a reputation for being extremely difficult and so later on they're essentially going to patch an easy mode into the game as dlc for people who just want to experience a story because this is also one of those where apparently you're supposed to play the game multiple times over but it's also oh, brutally nice. difficult it's like uh, no <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. Um, that's good. That's really that's fun. That's that's uh, that's that feels good in terms of like, hey, we're remastering this game from an age where we had to make these games two hundred hours long, so people felt like they were getting their money's worth. Like, go for it. Yep. And then I think that the I watched a little bit of this. Nino Kuni has a mobile game that they're putting out, uh, which I'm not, again, I'm not a huge fan of mobile games, but this is like a full 3D, um, like walking around. And what's interesting about it is it's actually an, it's an action game. Like it, uh, in the beginning, some of the sequences reminded me of like Dynasty Warriors where they're, they're hacking and slashing like a whole bunch of foes on the screen. So, which seemed like a very strange 
way to bring a like a, a more slower turn-based RPG to phones and then making it into like a hack and slash action game. But I also didn't watch all of this because um, Nino Kuni, I don't I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I tried the first one. I didn't like it. And then everybody told me I was stupid for not liking it. And then that just made me not like it more. So um, this almost is this is this multiplayer also? Yes. Yes. Crossworlds. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm starting to see the ca- like, okay, a mobile game, but also it's become real time and it definitely has this almost MMO look to the user interface. Um, but there being a multiplayer element to this also, uh, it's starting to check off a lot of boxes here of what this thing might be. Yeah. Huh. I mean, obviously just a way to monetize um, Nino Kuni past just making like long difficult rpgs also i'd like to apologize to bryce because my computer apparently won't buffer any video while we're doing this um oh no it's fine i got it up here pulling stuff up as okay as well um let's see there's a few other things i'm trying to think of some of the other stuff that was in here so uh, in uh, i sent you a couple of these um r-type final 2 is getting a release i didn't actually know this but r-type final 1 was i believe a playstation 2 game um, and it has been that long since there's been like a new R type game out, and this one has like uh, you can customize a bunch of different ships. It's got some nice looking, you know, kind of cutscenes, and then in between it looks like very much an R type kind of shmup, a kind of bullet hell shmup. Which, um, you know, I'm I'm down for that. Uh, what a really that seems cool. It, it's cool seeing um, high production shoot 'em up games like there's no it's an endless font of uh, shoot 'em ups probably since the last time an r type game was made but uh if they with the with i don't know i think of R, when i think of r type i don't know it feels like a higher end shoot 'em up so if this is if this is good like this could be another shot in the arm for the genre mm-hmm. i also really like um this megaton Q Musasha, Musas, Musashi. Yeah. Um, this is a level five game, and it looks like it kind of looks like 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, or you have like a part where you're talking to people and they've got really generic anime designs. And then when you're not doing that, you're kind of taking like 80s style giant robots out and having kind of a third person brawl with stuff. Like, I kind of dig this concept. Um, oh, so huh? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, hmm. and then, uh, but I think the big thing—I tell you what—let's not, let's not, let's not mess around. The big thing was that there was a bunch more high rule warriors stuff that happened, um, or there was at least. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, sorry. There was a there was like a 15 minute presentation. There was a new trailer, and they showed that Impa, young Impa, is going to be one of the playable characters, which is pretty cool. Um they also showed that if you pre-order the game, you get a spoon. So that's Oh, well that, then. That's pretty cool as well. Um have you are have you the, are I don't have much experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much experience with these Muso games. I did not play the last Hyrule Warriors um looking at this trailer this certainly looks like Breath of the Wild um you know I this this seems cool this seems like an, a fun way to take this formula I mean we'll talk we'll, we might talk more about the new Dynasty Warriors that they showed off um but at least this makes me feel like okay there's uh there's something going on here right you're at least uh, you're trying to do something a little different with this kind of defined um sort of siege battle game Mm -hmm. yeah i i i'm all for it because hyrule warriors uh the first hyrule warriors was like um i think that the dynasty warriors games can get i i've always maintained that i think that the dynasty warriors game was whether you like them or not is going to be entirely based on what they're based off of Right. So if you like Gundam, you'll probably like the Gundam Dynasty Warriors game. If you like Fist of the North Star, you'll probably like that Fist of the North Star game that they put out. Um, This, though, I thought Hyrule Warriors was kind of a cut above those because Nintendo, I feel like 
pushed them to make a more polished game and then gave them their own more polished assets to work with. And so what you ended up with was just a better version of the Dynasty Warriors um, formula. At least that was my Hmm. impression. Um, And then I love the idea of saying, well, like if you're going to set another, if you're going to make a prequel to Breath of the Wild, which where the mechanics were very much based on this exploration thing, but this is taking place during the war that led up to the, the great calamity, then using the dynasty warrior system makes more sense than using the, Oh, I broke my sword. Oh, I could pick up a rock and throw it at a guy. Oh, I set that field on fire system of breath of the wild. So, um, yeah, I actually was saying, I think when this was first announced that I wish more games would do this where like, if the story needed you to have different mechanics, you didn't try to, shoehorn your existing mechanic system into it like i always felt like the uh like the large scale battles in assassin's creed didn't feel right because i feel like that system was made for kind of one-on-one and stealth combat so then you get to this thing where you're supposed to fight a bunch of people but it just it never really clicked for me so i'm glad to see that they're going with something that is different and the fact that it's a prequel means that if it's no good then people can just say eh, i'm not gonna play it like it's not going to be integral yeah. to what's going on. So, yeah, I think you 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 hit the nail on the head with it. Like Breath of the Wild makes a point of like, hey, you time skipped. Hey, look at you. Uh, the world's destroyed, and being able to at the same time franchise out the Zelda name and get a new game in this f- new formula um, is like a, a really smart way of storytelling that. Um, uh, that that's cool, and I think that would be like I don't I don't know Breath of the Wild. The story stuff was f- fine for me, um, but if you say, hey, here's that same world and a new way to experience it, and maybe more um, uh, explicit storytelling, or maybe a little better storytelling, uh, I, I think you could sell me on this. Yeah, yeah, I I'm super into it, uh, and and the fact that it comes out in November, even though November's completely full from top to bottom um <laughs> it'll be nice to play to not have to wait um all right so from there we could talk about the main event i believe of this week the biggest thing that has happened and that is uh super smash brothers ultimate there is a new a new challenger has approached and uh who who is it bryce who is the new smash brothers character well, I'm looking at my screen. And it looks like it might be Dark Mario. Is that no? <laughs> Who could that possibly be? Uh, no, uh, Minecraft. They they don't. They make a point to not say like Minecraft Steve, but just like all a bunch of different Minecraft characters are getting uh, added in the next DLC pack. I guess in the initial thing it says Steve, but it's Steve, uh, Alex, which is the female version of Steve, uh, Ender, the Enderman, and zombie characters. This is. This did you look at this the way I did, uh, Jeff, and say this makes sense, I guess. <laughs> this, no, I I this makes sense, I guess. I I it's funny, I feel like I come at Minecraft from a sl- or I come at Smash Brothers from a different perspective where people get they get really mad when the person that they want in Minecraft isn't in Minecraft. But I don't care who's in Minecraft, so I'm just like, oh, or, smash? Or, or, smash, yeah. So I'm like, oh, the <laughs> Steve from Minecraft. That sure, yeah, that makes total sense. Um, that that seems like it would work really well for for this particular franchise. Um, I mean, I don't know and who's like left. The, mm-hmm. Like, uh, I mean, Wario, obviously. It's true. Still gotta get, still gotta get Wario or not Wario, uh, Waluigi. That's what I mean. I I watching this promotional tra- and you know some of the stuff they set up and and who knows what this actually looks like in game but this seems like a really complicated character set uh possibly or uh, maybe a very technical character it would be a better way to describe it like they said they they said oh we have to go in and like retouch all of these levels so that you can build blocks on them mm-hmm. so that these characters can actually <laughs> do Minecraft in the game um, and so I wonder what that all really looks like. And if, if the community is interested in a character that has like, oh, you have to hit a button to get iron and then hit a button to like craft that iron into a sword. I wonder. 
I, you know, it's funny. But I would have said that that would have been like a real detriment, but then, you know, we've seen characters like the um, uh, da, 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 Dragon Quest protagonist where you literally open up, one of the buttons opens up a menu and then you choose from a random set of spells that are in that menu. So one of the nice things I think about Smash is that the core mechanics are are very simple. So I think you can add weird stuff onto them and it doesn't necessarily feel completely out of place. Like some characters are very simple to play, but other characters have a lot more kind of insanity. I mean, just like the Pokemon trainer, right? You can switch between the three different Pokemon and that was just like a default character. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I think this is fine. I, but you know, I like, I don't have, just, yeah, I don't have a dog. I'm not like, no, it's got to be Doom Guy. We need Slayer <laughs> from Dark Souls and Smash Brothers. I think it's fine. I, I, I will just say the the weird disconnect I think that happens, maybe is partially happening here also is Steve and Alex, you know, are like default player skins, but also you never really see them. Or if you're the person who like hits the third person view ever it's because you've got like your own skin and you like are setting up a screenshot where you see yourself i've never looked at minecraft steve and thought this is the face of minecraft you know because <laughs> i you never look at steve you never look at this dude and tuck your shirt in steve <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> yeah and so it makes all of their actions look really weird in a way that don't ever capture, I think, the the actual adventure of playing Minecraft in first person. So what you're saying is that if you choose Minecraft Steve and Smash Brothers, then you have to play Smash Brothers from a first person perspective? That's right. You have to stop and hit the camera mode every time and <laughs> swatch, swoop it over to 90, per, 90 degrees. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, it, this is just, Minecraft makes sense. Steve doesn't make a lot of it would make more sense to use any of the characters from the telltale Minecraft game because at least you like primarily interacted with those looking at them hmm. I don't know maybe, or maybe, maybe like I mean I guess see I, it's I you know what I might actually throw in is that they have I wonder how much work it would take they have that system where you can build a level out of blocks right you can make your own uh, right. smash level is there a way to mod that to basically let you have a character editor for your minecraft skin inside of smash brothers and then when somebody inevitably makes yeah. the like naked dude with his dong out do you let them play online with the minecraft dong out i don't know these are questions for philosophers i'm just a podcaster maybe maybe they okay maybe they update the nintendo app mm -hmm. so that you can log in with your uh, with your Minecraft Microsoft Xbox Live 365 account, and then you can pick the skins you've already uploaded for Steve or for the Alex model, and then you can play as yourself in my in <laughs> Smash Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I like I right? like get rid of the me system. No more me system. Everyone is Steve or Alex. Okay, I th I'm 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 down with that. As somebody who never who doesn't care what my avatar looks like, I got tired of making custom avatars a long time ago. I'm like I'll just I'll take I'll take it. Whatever you got, I'll take it. Um, I don't know. It'd be interesting. This one doesn't have as many downvotes as I thought. I feel like everything that Nintendo puts out now that is not Minecraft has like a 50-50 upvote downvote on it. Like they get a lot of downvotes. Like for the Nintendo partner directs, it'll just be like, you know, 60% upvotes and 40% downvotes because people are like, who's next in Smash? All I care about is Smash Brothers. It's like, well, I don't know. I like the Mario I ones and <laughs> At least this like creates a vacuum where the Minecraft Steve in Smash rumor existed with like new ideas. Now we can begin a new cycle of who is going to be the next one in this season pass. Um, I, God, I think you're more of an optimist than I am. I, <laughs> I feel like the next time Nintendo announces anything, there's going to be a bunch of people in the chat room in the live premiere chat room like who's next in Smash? Like that's all. It's like this weird tunnel vision that I don't understand, but yeah. Eh, eh. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. From there, I've forgotten how I laid all this out. We got zombies. 
We got some Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War, Zombies Reveal trailer. I thought we already knew that there were going to be zombies. I don't think this is a big surprise, but um, did you... Did they you... talk a lot about story in this, which was really surprising to me. Do, do the zombies most normally have a campaign? Yes. Uh, hmm. As near as I could tell, because the whole thing about zombies is uh, you start at one location, and then as you push forward from rounds, you open up the map, and it kind of... I think it tells kind of an environmental story, but like not uh, the last time there was a zombies mode was Black Ops 4 for modern. No, for World War Two, there was like this weird like throwback. We're on a ship full of zombies. I, th- I think that's the one that it was. There was like a time travel thing where you went back to this Roman arena it was like a bunch of little stories. It was very strange. One of uh, one of these first look videos that they have where they talk a little bit more about the story was really <laughs> I don't know I don't I don't play Call of Duty. I don't know too much other than zombies is apparently just all you need to say and that can be its own genre or mode whatever. Mm. Um but this guy was talking about like oh well the last time we we did zombies we you know we really collapsed the multiverse and we really tried to set up a new reality where the zombies weren't strong like what the <laughs> fuck i thought this was just a, a, a wave mode this is it it's almost like fallout how goofy this presentation is like okay Cold War and zombies. And also there are like fucking ray guns and bazookas for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, man. Uh, people love this. Apparently this is the most popular game in the world, actually. So I'm the weird one. On it, I, I, I No, I, I tell you what, if you're the weird one, then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hang out with you over here in the weird room because I've tried playing just about every one of these modes that have come out and I don't get it. Like they seem... Like all of the, all of the difficulty of playing a Call of Duty game, but with none of the like, oh hey, I I killed that guy, I I killed my friend in multiplayer, right? Because it's just a co-op mode. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe there's just been that it's that void that was left by Left for Dead, and nobody's making new Left for Deads, and some people want to do four player co-op online with my buddies, you know, uh, playing these. I mean. Just like every Call of Duty, this trailer looks makes this game look really, really exciting. But I know it's yeah. not going to be exciting when I play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's also what got me confused. It's like I thought in these in the zombie modes, whatever, you're usually just like hunkering down in one place and putting up boards and stuff, and then going going through waves. But this is like a jet setting global adventure, and helicopter people will come in and save you and. Uh, supposedly this ties into the battle pass that'll be in uh, in Cold War. So, uh, cool, I guess. I think this they really made this look like a colorful, exciting thing, which is not um, normally what I have understood zombies to be. Yeah, I like some of the stuff they talked about. You mentioned the battle pass, that it used to be that there was... They, it seems like this version of Call of Duty, they're really kind of unifying everything, that it felt like... Modern Warfare launched and it was its own thing. And then like Warzone launched like as a separate but also part of Modern Warfare. Um, and at this time, they're really trying to unify the multiplayer, the zombies, and the Warzone, at least into the same battle pass progression. Um, I like the idea that you can level up and bring... Because it used to be that whenever you started a new game of zombies you started with like a pistol and then as you went through the rounds you would get cash and you use this cash between rounds to like buy a better gun from these little vending machines that would unlock i like the idea of being able to start to come in with like a real gun and not have to start over with a pistol every time um they talked about how if you feel like you're not going to be able to make it to the end you can kind of pull the rip cord halfway through and get some progression credit for that if you can survive all the way out um, of course, it was a little strange when they were saying, basically, like, if you think you can't, 
uh, if you don't think you can finish this wave, you can always like leave if you can survive the ultra hard wave that comes when you decide to leave. And it was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> right. There's a lot of weird contradictions like that. They're describing the story here. They're like, okay, well, this is a prequel. This is kind of outside of our previous zombie thing. It's kind of a new take on zombies. But we don't, don't worry. We're definitely going to have characters from previous zombies, just so for fans who know the game might see the same game. Like, what the? F- what the? It's zombies. <laughs> they got a machine that makes zombies, and you kill the zombies, and you blow up the machine. That Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough to say for sure. I do know that, I mean, just like I... I I've I've been unable to muster even a little bit of excitement for Black Ops since the day it was announced because I I don't like this. We're just going to go back and start remaking all of the previous Call of Duties over and over again. And um, is is this a remake? I thought Cold War was a new thing. Is it, hmm? uh, well, I don't know. I guess it's maybe just the idea of going back to. 80s I, I thought the first black ops took place in like the 70s and 80s i could be mistaken about that i don't know i mean th- that's not the only reason that i'm not on board <laughs> call of duty has yeah, been yeah. losing me for a <laughs> few years so um i don't know but we'll see we'll see how it goes uh let's see from there uh let's talk about something let's let's do we have enough time for drama? I think we got to have time for drama before we have to take yeah, a break here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Spider-Man is being remastered for the PlayStation 5. We all knew that. Uh, we got some new, some new, like there's going to be some new suits. They're redoing the city and uh, ray tracing. They're, they're making new trees. They're putting puddles on the ground. They're, they're, they're touching it up, Jeff. They're mm-hmm. touching it up. Yep. And one of the things they've touched up is Peter Parker's face. And apparently, somebody had to tell me this. I was like, oh, okay. And they were like, people are really mad. I'm like, why? Why are people really uh, mad about Peter Parker's face? He just, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, now, the reason they said mm-hmm. they're doing this is because the, like, uh, the, the face is going to be more higher resolution now on the PlayStation 5, and they needed a face that would match the, the motion capture actor's points of articulation better than the face they used on the ps4 that's do you want the quote yeah the quote was but as we discussed the franchise's future and moving to the playstation 5 it quickly became apparent that delivering even more believable looking characters made finding a better facial match for actor yuri lowenthal who we all love as peter a necessity what what is it what <laughs> what what that doesn't what does that mean like i look i'm i don't this is really, uh, really inconsequential, inconsequential for a game where you spend all of your time wearing a mask, whatever. Mm-hmm. But what I appreciated about the previous depiction of Peter Parker in Marvel Spider-Man was he looked older. He looked experienced. He, you know, this is not an origin story. You are like in the the thick of it a little bit. And it makes the various points in that story whether you're like flashing back or uh t- you know talking and like mentoring miles like it makes a lot of that stuff feel more right this this new version of the face looks a lot younger looks a lot like tom holland but apparently they've said it's not him they've got another facial face person that they're using but it just seems i i I would put if if there's a line in the sand, I would step on the side of the line that says this is maybe a not good decision for the game. It's not going to break anything, whatever. But this, I kind of look at this. The old, you would trust that the that Spider Man is the older Spider Man is like more experienced and and maybe knows a little bit more about what he's doing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've uh, historically, legendarily, I don't really care as much about Spider-Man as a lot of other people do. Um, but mm. I, I don't know. It was strange to see this. It's just, it's one of those weird video game things where you're like, why did you, why did you change out the, like, why not just tweak the existing face to make it work better if that's what yeah. the problem is? Well, my, I, I think reading between the lines on their response because that quote that i read is like their second their second statement about this when everyone was saying like hey don't do that um i think what is the plan is like hey 
8 billion people all bought Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. A lot of them are going to buy Miles Morales. And when we make Marvel Spider-Man 2, we need to have uh, a hot Peter Parker. And (laughs) if he looks like he's 30, it's not going to get all of the same swooning that 21 year old Tom Holland would do. So we have to frame, we now have to franchise this massive blockbuster success after the fact with a hotter guy. And I, I think out, uh, all the other things that this might be of like, is this a franchise thing with Disney or Marvel? Is this a Sony thing with the fucking making this a separate thing? Like, I think at the end of the day, they know that they have a huge game that they're going to make a sequel of, that they're going to bring this character back again and they need him to be hot and they need him to be hot and they need to do this now so we don't have the same conversation when Marvel Spider-Man 2 comes out. Okay. I, I that that makes as much sense to me as anything else. I did that while you were talking. I was, you know, comparing the two faces here. Uh, the, the previous... Uh, like character model does kind of resemble that thing in Hollywood where a 30 year old actor is trying to play like a, like a 17 year old and you're like, you're not 17. Get out of here. Um, well, and I, I think, you know, some people were saying, well, Spider-Man is supposed to be like 25 or something in this video game. And like, I never took away that as the impression. And I, I, I don't know. I like him looking a little older. So see me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm more interested in Miles uh, after Spider Verse and all that stuff. I mean, you know, I just I want to play Miles Morales. Um, but yeah, apparently people really care a lot about this. I, it's just one of those things where I, I hate to give a hot take on the internet that is like, uh, I don't know. I mean, whatever. It's just trading one white guy out for some other white guy. I don't give a shit. But well, that's true. But it's it's uh, part of the other thing about this is like can. Can we fucking figure out what we're doing with the Spider-Man game on PlayStation 5? It seems like there is nothing but rocky roads with this game. There's no save transfers if you get the remastered version. You you can't get the remastered version on its own. The... Uh, it's you you can't get any free upgrade despite the fact that like like this is such a huge game and it seems like they've taken they've decided to step on every lego brick that they can from here to there this is this i i just i feel like they should have just fucking figured this out and kept all of this not be the conversation about this game because miles morales looks fucking awesome Mm -hmm. it looks really cool i would love to play more spider-man and now i have to think of like okay well you know did i did did i really like did i finish did i feel like i finished uh, ps4 spider-man would would i want to play that again if i want to play that again should i get the 70 dollar version but like all of this stuff is like can't you can't you make this easy i'll say like Microsoft is doing a good job of trying to make this shit fucking feel easy. And all of this, everything about Spider-Man doesn't feel easy. Yeah. I was actually, um, uh, right. Okay. So as you were saying that, I wanted to confirm that I wasn't remembering this wrong because apparently if you buy Miles Morales on the PS4, you do get it on the PS5. Like you get the software on the PS5. Um, you get Miles Morales on the PS5. Right, but you don't get... You can't... Like, having the original doesn't work. And, like, yeah, we're getting into that whole save game thing where you can't transfer your save game over. And last week, I admit, I'm a little poo-poo about... Like, I I think that when games are really good, I really don't mind playing back through them regardless of kind of how long they are. In a lot of cases, I feel like that's, like, oh, if I'm getting a remastered version of Spider-Man, I don't want to play it New Game Plus. I want to just kind of go back and start over from the beginning and just experience that. But I realize that that is a very specifically personal thing to me and that, you know, Mm -hmm. I deleted the Red Dead Redemption save that Jason and I put 65 Mm -hmm. hours into by accident, and I'm like, eh, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Well... (laughs) And but. when it's when it's a third party, you know, if we're like you look at the control uh, ultimate edition thing that's going on and all of their own decisions like, all right, that's an external. Pull. But this is this is a Sony. This is like Insomniac making this game for Sony with spy. Like this is such a big deal that why can't. Why can't you figure this out? Why 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 can't you figure out at least a way to tell us this stuff that doesn't feel so difficult? I mean, we'll talk a little bit later about uh possibly about Yakuza and like 
uh, that's not Sony necessarily. I, we don't know what the reason for any of these weird next gen functionality is, but it, you know, it makes like I, I'm speaking of control. Like I'm excited about control. I did not play control. I would love to play control. I know if I get on the PlayStation four, I will get the PlayStation five version now, but now I don't know if that save game would even cross over. Would yeah. I, would it, would it, would, I, like I legitimately don't know because now this is a thing where they have to come out and say it because it's not, it's, it's, it's some reason these companies aren't doing that. And it, it, it's, it's mind boggling to me to, and, and I'll be, uh, you know, we can actually just, I, I, I put all this stuff in a specific order, but, uh, we can, we can, we can move these around a little bit. Um, yeah, the yeah in Yakuza, Yakuza Like a Dragon saves on the PS4 won't transfer uh, to the PS5 for some reason. In all honesty, though, I mean, reading all this stuff, this feels like the janky, convoluted methodology that I expect from Sony. To be honest, like I like Sony a lot, but I feel like hot damn are some of the things they do janky, like. The reason I I don't have my Red Dead Redemption 2 saved on my PS4 is because um, the Sony save game cloud will eventually fill up. And when it does, it just Mm -hmm. stops uploading your save files. And like the only way to get to be able to upload your save files is you have to go manually delete save games out of the cloud to free up storage space. And it is an arduous shitty process you have to do it like one save game at a time you can't just say like delete everything that's three years or older right like you should have a button or there should be an option to let me pay you five dollars to get an additional two gigs worth of cloud storage and i feel like i was i was looking at some of the playstation 3 i had a friend who was playing final fantasy 13 on their playstation 3 the playstation 3 broke down and the optical drive broke in it and they were close to the end and it was like oh okay well you can buy digital games on the ps3 right and it's like well you can buy final fantasy 13 too you could buy lightning returns but final fantasy 13 the original is only available as a physical disc and cannot be purchased digitally on the ps3 or the way that on the I, i'm just going to go down the list now on the vita that's tv the, that's fucking bonkers uh-huh the vita tv won't let you turn off hdcp so you can't capture content off of your Vita TV without using an HDCP stripper, which was also a function yeah. that the PS4 didn't have on launch. It took them like I mean, yeah, that's right. like months. I have several HDCP strippers for just that reason. <laughs> so yeah. like uh, this to me smacks a lot of like, and I feel like Nintendo has some of this as well of just the super convoluted bespoke systems that aren't built on top of like, that's the advantage that Microsoft has of being the people who have been making like OSs for a long time that are compatible with a lot of different things. You just say, yeah, man, bring your save games over. Why wouldn't it do that? And then you're like, well, Sony, do you do that? It's like, well, it's complicated. It's super. You've got to create an account on our website and then upload the file off a USB key and then we'll convert it to a PlayStation 5 file. And it's like, what? Why? Just make it work. it's it's bizarre and it's the worst time for this to happen um you know if the idea you know there, there have been a lot of press embargoes going up with the xbox series s where people have been allowed to play back and back games and you see them doing like um the big thing that they're showing off is like quick the quick resume and hibernate stuff where you can just switch games really quickly mm-hmm. and like that feels really cool that feels like um the next uh, and i went i don't know that i would use it a lot but i know that recently i've been playing maybe two or three games on my PlayStation. And I notice it when I have to stop and go over to another, Mm -hmm. you know, close it out. But that feels like, okay, well the current generation laid the groundwork for games to recognize being in a, in a sleep state and being suspended for a certain amount of time. And now that we've opened up the hardware a little bit more, we can actually use those states um, as a way of switching between games, right? You look at the way that the the current generation is set up, almost like it was supposed to, uh, but they couldn't make it work. And now that now that that stuff is in there in the backwards compatibility side, like like that's an incremental upgrade with the console generations. Why the fuck are save games <laughs> being an issue? Like, and this the, the other issue with this, if I can just go on and on, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which by the way, just a terrible name, just so I can get that out there. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon is coming out to everywhere except the PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. PlayStation Five is getting this patch or this version. I we I, would, I don't know if it's a patch or a version. What 
for three months. Three. So if you get the PS4 version, and you, you are you going to not play it for three months? Or are you just going to decide you're not going to upgrade? Like like. Then it's, it's I'm I'm <laughs> flabbergasted by this because figure this figure it out fucking figure it out F- fucking figure it out seriously figure it out yeah I I hmm. I'd be willing to well okay I the, so uh, some uh, I feel like this stuff does get somewhat complicated especially when you're dealing with like a hardware manufacturer a brand new system a third-party developer like this could very much be a thing where it's one of the things that that i sometimes get a little bit like weird about where this could very well be a thing where sony is like please please sega make it so that you can buy it on the ps4 and then transfer it on the ps5 and they're just like no like or you're the architecture is too different or there's some kind of thing like i always like to remember that a lot of times when we assume that something can't be done for reason X, there's actually another reason that we just know nothing about. But the mm-hmm. end result, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the reason is. It means that if you're a PlayStation owner and you want to play Yakuza Like a Dragon, which if you are a Yakuza fan, you probably already own a Sony console. It wasn't until very recently that those were available anywhere but Sony consoles. Then like mm-hmm. you're going to get the new Yakuza game and then what? get it a second time start over and in start over yeah like m- maybe i don't know um a turn-based game you wouldn't catch me and look man i like i like those yakuza games make it but also making it a turn-based game that's the last fucking thing i want to do is stop and start over on on those long ass like the, i yeah i also agree there's probably a technical reason this there's, there's it, it, it doesn't happen widespread like this unless there's a there is a firm reason for it but this is a new piece of hardware like how are you not able to bridge this gap the whole point is that there's there should be continuity between these two devices i'm not saying you need the microsoft's patented smart delivery to figure this out but like your whole thing is this is simple there are generations well that doesn't excuse there being a brick wall between these things because this is the time when you need to show that you have some I, it's just well, it's uh, uh, figure it out. So uh, I figure it out. I, I, it's interesting too because as you were saying that, I was thinking how like for Sony there is a brick wall between generations, right? There, there isn't. I mean, you got PlayStation now, but that's such an afterthought. But there's like there's no bringing your Dark Siders save over from your PlayStation Three to Dark Siders remastered on your PS4. There's no like transferring your save game from Grand Theft Auto Five on the PS3 and then continuing to play it once it finally comes out on your PS4. The same way, there's no way to read a PS2 memory card on a PlayStation Three. There's no way. I mean, in after they took out well, the mm-hmm, Emotion mm-hmm, Engine, mm-hmm. there wasn't a way to play PS2 games on a PS3. And I think that. Because I, I, it almost makes me wonder whether the methodology for Microsoft is about as is more about that smooth transition, and for Sony, it's about like you could only play Spider Man on our console, and we don't give a shit if we're gonna make you we're gonna make you buy it eight times. We don't care. Like we do feel there's a delineation between the PS three PS four and the PS five, and the backwards compatibility or uh, continuity of save games or whatever is just not their priority because it wasn't their priority in the previous generation and they did just fine. And so moving forward, they're like, our priority is like making this new generation be the hottest shit in town and then giving you a bunch of games that you could only play on the hottest shit in town. Whereas Microsoft like I was talking about last week, how between Game Pass on the PC and the X Cloud on the phone and the Series S and the Series X, like Microsoft is more just like whatever your gaming need is, we have a device that you can use for it. And Sony's like, you need to buy this one thing, this one monolithic mm-hmm. unit to get to the quote unquote Sony experience. So yeah, I don't know. And you know, I I think. That as a battle play, if it, we are in June 2019, we got a new console coming out. We're making a battle plan. You're right, Jeff. Yes, I'm on board. Let's show them what only the PlayStation 5 can do. Let's show them what only the PlayStation 5 can do. And But now that every game has been delayed and a lot of these big first party games are cross platform, Miles Morales is going to be on the PlayStation 4. Horizon, the new Horizon is going to be on the PlayStation 4. Like I think it's great that those games have availability, but 
but that's not that's not the plan, Jeff. That's not what you can only do on the PlayStation Five. And uh, there was a video from uh, uh, the Major Nelson guy showing him like, "Hey, I'm playing on my new Xbox Series X. Here, I'm gonna boot up an old. I'm gonna boot up Fallout Four, and because I got cloud saves, I can just immediately I can boot up in fucking five seconds and continue playing where I was playing last time. And like, that's that is." Uh, uh, to, to, to be all appley about it that's the magic of the technology that's that's where you feel like oh my god i am really in a different space and in, in a generous space that understands w- what i use this thing for mm-hmm. how and and designs it in such a way that is made for me and and is made for me not just today but for years down the road right like uh, th- Microsoft has done a lot of work to figure this out and Sony and Nintendo have been doing this longer and you get bogged down in stuff like that, right? You talk about the name change stuff on, on the PlayStation. There's still like like 10 games out there that will just utterly break if you change your PlayStation name and a lot, and some of those games are pretty recent. Um, but uh, that's that's crust, sure. That's cruft. That's that's build up over time. Like we didn't build this right the first place. Sorry, everybody, but you got to, if if you either, if you're if you're doing this if you're giving if you're telling me there's turbulence, either rip off the bandaid and ma- and say we're gonna it, it's gonna be fine from now on from now on we're gonna solve it right. or we're not doing this uh, adjust your expectations because we're focusing on these other things and right now where there are less games to show off we can't we can't see what those other things are those things just aren't they aren't manifesting and so it feels very it feels it feels like a very t- tough sell for for really really either of these consoles but in specific the playstation because what is is it going to be this difficult with everything is it gonna be this difficult with everything probably i mean honestly as somebody who went through the launch of the playstation 3 and who went through the launch of the playstation 4 and who went through the launch of playstation 2 yeah like you're gonna have to go buy a memory card. You didn't realize that you needed one until you got home and you were uh, eight hours into the launch game, and then you went to go save, and you were like, "Why can't I save by game?" Oh, what do you mean I have to buy a fifteen dollar memory card? Or you know, the all the evolution that happened on the PlayStation Three side, uh, how everything on the PlayStation Three was garbage for two years like for the first two <laughs> years it was a shitty console mm-hmm. video after video on the internet was like comparing the 360 and the ps3 version the 360 version always looked better unless it was like uncharted unless it was a sony first party game built from that cell processor but if it was like a pc 360 ps3 ps3 looked like dick like total dick and yeah. then you go back to the beginning of this generation and like look at the xbox fall on its face with connect and the dvr and all that messaging that was just over off and i mean look at the confused wii. and yeah, yeah the wii u the way that that just crashed and burned like entirely or, or not entirely but you know they had problems i think that there's probably I have been thinking a lot over the last few weeks about the expectations that we have uh, from game companies moving forward because I keep seeing this this question of backwards compatibility and I, it's funny how it's become this like really big this really big thing in this generation that I've never seen people care as much about at any previous point in the generations like even right. the ex- you could always you could always explain it away in a certain way, right? Like, oh, okay, well, the PlayStation, you know, especially at the time, the PS3 will have has the chips. You could just get the right one that has right. the chip in it until you couldn't, right? Or uh, with that, you know, I think what Xbox, it's it's partly because of the the work that Xbox has done to really like try to keep that legacy of games going. They have a shorter legacy, but that's also easier for them to maintain, and. I guess the question is like, why am I getting a console at this point? You know, we, okay. Last time you moved over to, uh, uh, to, uh, to basically a PC architecture. Okay, cool. Easier to develop for quicker ports, whatever. But then we're not even getting all of those benefits here in trying to keep similar architecture between these systems. Like, okay, Backwards compatibility between the PS4, sure, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, most of those games will work. We don't know why some of the rest, some of them won't, but whatever. Um, 
but then all of the other stuff that goes in between there, game saves and and making up like it it just it if what you're selling is simplicity, like, hey, here's a box, we know what to do with it, here you go. Well, it doesn't feel like they know what they're doing with it. It doesn't feel like it feel like a lot of trade-offs and I don't we're not seeing the benefits right now so and, and oh sorry finish well and just uh like i agree like i had a playstation one and i remember calling up blockbuster when playstation 2 was up and like hey can i play these new games on my playstation can they just be slow like uh, obviously kid that doesn't they don't work because that was the era but we're like in a new era where all these boxes are basically the same thing they're all using the same components more or less don't email don't email me but <laughs> if the idea is that like okay we flattened the development uh, you know the, the the development cycle here across all these different things then you need to you need to have the extras around you need to have something around there so that I'm I'm not feeling duped because I got a PS5 instead of spending a thousand dollars to upgrade my PC, right? Because hey, guess what? My Steam library still fucking works on my PC, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, you I, have to. It's it's a it, like e. I don't know. That, that stuff should be easy. I like I know it didn't used to be easy. That stuff should be easier than this. Yeah. See, I I get the impression that that it's almost like. Um, that you've seen a split that this is the split that nobody's really talking about or, or that people are talking about obviously but that this is the split is that Microsoft is selling that and Sony is doing what they always do which is some experimental high end hardware bullshit that may end up with like making things that you've never seen before right like the cell processor you might end up with Uncharted, a game where you're like, I've never seen anything that looks like this before. Or you might end up with a really bad version of Rainbow Six Vegas that looks like just <laughs> horrible or Bayonetta with six minute load times, right? But that mm -hmm. I think that Sony Hughes, in a weird way, they're like, they kind of in the Venn diagram, it's like you've got Nintendo kind of playing around with innovation and then like top of the line PC stuff and that they sit in the Venn diagram between those two of they're trying to make something that's going to differentiate based on some weird hardware fuckery. Like the PS4 to me is the outlier uh, that it's just like a PC for the most part. And even then it has a VR attachment. Like there's some stuff that the PS4, you know, they have the touchpad for whatever that's worth. <laughs> I mean, um, so do you see, you see the PS5 as a, return to that idea of like going uh to more proprietary um hardware yes uh the 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 type of ssd the custom ssd that's in the playstation 5 is like if you had to buy that for uh if you were buying one of those gen 4 ssds well hell last week to buy a replacement uh or to buy an expansion to the ssd uh, uh, storage in the Xbox Series X, those expansion cards for two terabytes are going to cost $225 a piece. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea that so like Microsoft is using... But, uh, that, that seems so weird to me because in that specific example, right, like Microsoft is having to make proprietary memory cards like that where Sony has said, hey, the hard drives that we're using aren't like at consumer grade friendly yet, but we will certify like these M2 or these, what is it? EV, uh, N NVMe, what the, these yeah. high speed drives so that you can just go and buy one and, and plug it in. You don't need to go get a Seagate branded Xbox expansion card. Right. But I still feel um, that, that, mm -hmm. that they're both, I mean, they're both kind of running, like that custom hard drive controller that they're using on the PlayStation 5 that's supposed to be able to get that like what two two times the throughput from the SSD that the Xbox is able to get like to me that that and when you watch that Mark Cerny if you go back and watch that that really boring Mark Cerny thing that's exciting to me but boring to everybody else it's like what I've done it recently I think it's great I think it's thrill it's a thrill of it actually <laughs> I think that what they're doing is that like Microsoft is building what they're kind of assuming is off the rack next gen but like that Sony proprietary like hard drive seat controller it reeks of cell processor to me because it's like if you're programming for it then you could do things that nobody's ever seen before 
but we get back into that question of if you're converting a game that was built to work on a wide variety of different hard drives to the PlayStation 5, is it going to be able to take advantage of this crazy bespoke controller storage seek method that they've come up with? Or is it going to run about the same as an Xbox, except a little bit slower because the raw video memory on the Xbox is making up for it and the 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 port isn't like so fully optimized for a PlayStation 5 that it runs like Ratchet Clank. It just runs like everything else does Mm -hmm. because i mean we've already seen uh an example with devil may cry 5 about how the in the upgraded version with virgil there's going to be like extra ray tracing particles and enemies and stuff that are only going to be on the series x and ps5 version because at this point the PC version can't guarantee that you have a hard drive fast enough to keep up with the seek time necessary to stream the level of detail that they're looking to into the environment, whereas they know that the Xbox and the PlayStation 5 can do that. And I don't know. It's very strange. Like, to me, it's really weird. Like, buying a PS5 to me feels like buying your cutting-edge experimental hardware that may or may not pan out, probably will, given the track record, and that Xbox is more just like this is going to be a more polished, easygoing experience, and that I I'm starting to see I guess I'm starting to look at them and see like two different methodologies where it's not like it's not versus it would be like if you were if you were at that store and you were like should I get a Switch or should I get a PlayStation Four right they do totally two totally different things so comparing the two of them doesn't work and I know that the Series X and the PS5 are closer, but in stories like this makes me think that like Microsoft's methodology is about ease of use. Sony's methodology is about like super cutting edge stuff that may show you something that you've never seen before. And and one of the things that's going to hold that back uh, to to call, call back to that Mark Cerny talk, which again is really great if you haven't seen it. Um, he mentions that one of the that because we're they're using these high speed SSDs, uh, you can design games tighter. You don't need loading corridors and elevators and stuff. But that design principle doesn't work. Or to me sitting outside of outside of that bubble doesn't work if you are also having to make cross-gen titles for playstation 4 or for xbox one or for pc where having an ssd is not is still not the lowest common denominator yet um and maybe these new consoles push um uh, push developers and publishers to say, hey, you actually need as a minimum to install this on an SSD. Maybe it pushes them into that uh, or maybe not. Maybe PC continues to have this like both the lowest end and the highest end um, uh, settings and you have to account for all of them. And maybe that holds back games. I mean, it, there's certainly enough Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s out there that I totally understand why any publisher would say, hey, we actually need to sell a lot of games, actually. So we need to put these on a lot of boxes. And I get that. Uh, but I, I, I think I think that hard drive speed thing, which I, it should be more comparable on the new on the next generation stuff like uh, I, I think that's going to be a really major, a really big point going forward but right now when we're in this cross-gen period we're just we're not i don't know that we're going to be able to see a lot of the fruits of that on a on a fundamental level i mean stuff will load faster sure but that i mean we're talking design you know we're talking intentional design Mm -hmm. um in a way to work around technical limitations for previous hardware and uh, with that, I think we're going to take a break. Uh, it's funny how we ended up kind of doing the normal podcast thing and we like hit this one area and it just kind of flew off into this direction. So we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to be right back with more news. We'll see you in just a minute. And we're back. 
And when we left, uh, Bryce and I were talking a lot about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox One, uh, various hardware, software compatibility things. And one of the things that we learned this week was that apparently, and I think this is going to be a thing that we're going to see on a lot of PS5 games, uh, the Demon Souls remake is going to basically let you choose 4K, like rendering in 4K mode or like higher frame rate, but rendering at a lower resolution mode. Um I think that this is probably going to be a thing in Spider-Man as well. Like, I think we've heard some rumblings that you're going to have like either ray tracing or 60 FPS, but not like both at the same time. Um, oh, weird. I, I I feel like I've heard some rumblings about this where you, you're, you're rendering at like 1440p. There was like a um, what's that place that does like the that YouTube channel, Digital Foundry. Digital Foundry did a thing where they were noticing that the Cur- the last footage that of Demon Souls that came out was like rendering at 1440p and then uprezzing to uh, 4K um, as mm. opposed to like rendering at default 4K. Um, I don't know. Do you do you have a 4K TV? Do you do much of your gaming in 4K? No, I don't have a 4K TV, and I'm not likely to move into 4K gaming really at all so i think it's it's good to see this you know they i think they were pushing this really strongly with uh, the half step consoles that they did last this generation mm-hmm. where a game would uh say like hey do you want 4k or do you want a better frame rate and you know i'm i really don't care about 4k to be honest with you uh, my tv i'm not close enough to my tv and my tv is not big <laughs> enough for me to get any anything out of that so i'd rather have a 1080 or 1440 and have that extra that extra uh, horsepower used to making it look as good as it can. Mm. I would be I would find it very weird if if say I played Demon Souls on PS5 and the high frame rate mode didn't have ray tracing. That would that would be a huge bummer. Um, or no, sorry, on on the 4K version it wouldn't have ray tracing. That would seem like almost like a bill of goods. That would feel like a huge bait and switch for either of these consoles to try to pull off like, well, you can, you know, if you want it to look really good, you don't have to do ray tracing. Cause that seems, that seems bananas to me. And that, and that, by the way, is just something that I, I read somewhere as a rumor. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that that's okay. going to be happening, but like there was, um, there was some question about, I feel like, um, I feel like there've been a few questions about, I don't get the impression that the PS five for all that it's doing can render at native 2160 with the 60 frames per second frame rate with everything turned on at least for these launch titles that there's going to be either some up into 4k or a frame rate hit at least in the beginning now it's possible like we were talking about before one of the things when we were kind of getting to the end of that that i was thinking of was how different Every console, I feel like every single console that's ever come out, the first year to two years of that console is when developers are figuring stuff out. And that at the end of the first year or two, then you really start to see stuff that's taking full advantage of whatever that sea change shift is that's happening with that generation as opposed to, you know, kind of just the incremental upgrades. Like I feel like the beginning of the Xbox One and the PS4 generation, there was a lot of PC ports of previous generation games with slightly better graphics, slightly more cleaned up graphics, better load times, a little bit better compatibility. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the sort of thing that we're going to see with a lot of games, but that, that it'll end up phased out by the end of the first couple of years that we'll start to see things that are mo- moving a lot better. Because some of this is also kinda... uh, like incumbent on the engines that they're using, right, is if on you know if Epic starts doing things with Unreal that make it easier to render at a native 4K at 60 frames per second, then that might make it easier for developers to to do that. I mean, again, I don't really know if this is going to requ- how like how much bespoke work it takes to requ- to to create a game that plays at full 4K <laughs> at 60 frames per second with all the graphics turned up to 11. Like, I don't know how much development work that takes and whether it's something that, like, Unreal could do out of the box or if you take Unreal out of the box, then you have to do a lot of, like, after work on it to to get it up to that level of, of performance. But uh. Yeah, and, and I would want to know a little bit more. You know, when, when we talk about, like, say, the, the One X or the PS4 Pro and you were picking between resolution and frame rate, 
um, you know, it did make sense that you were picking between well, 4K and maybe 4K 30 or 1080 P60 or something close to that. Where I know with both of these with both of these new consoles coming up, we're not just talking about 4K. I know Sony at some point said the the cursed words 8K, um, <laughs> and there's been talk of support of what 144 or more uh, frames per second, much higher, even higher frame rate than 60. Right. And so I wonder if that's because I feel like the jump between 1080 and 4k has to be a pretty good amount of processing power, regardless of, uh, of what that game looks like. Similarly for, you know, 30 frames per second to 60 to 120 or 140, like, I don't know that you ever, unless Sony or Microsoft say, hey, like, this is what you're targeting. you got to hit this. And that's what it will always be. But I feel like the gulf between those two is so vast that you we're just going to have to have these options. And I think it's I'd rather have the option because I don't I'm not going to you're not going to catch me playing in 4K. I'd rather use that extra horsepower. But are we talking about, well, it would have been fine in 4K, but now it's maybe it doesn't doesn't look as good because it needs to hit 104 like i don't know i don't know we were, we were talking about such large chasms um that i it'd be great if there was one size fits all yeah i mean at this point it's interesting to me because i realized that um like i was doing some testing with the monitors that i have and my monitors my computer monitors only go up to 60 hertz right like getting a yeah. 120 hertz computer monitor is like a huge freaking investment <laughs> um so i'm pretty happy right now with the 4k i don't it, it i don't really need a game to run at 60 frames per second if it does i think it's great i've a long time ago, we had a very contentious video where one of my co-hosts was saying that, like, I don't even see when it's 60 frames per second, and people on Steam give this give this game a thumbs down because it's hardware locked at, or it's, it's software locked at 30 frames per second, and, like, why does everything have to run at a gajillion frames per second? Um, it's not as much of a thing for me, but I can definitely see it being, uh, well, if nothing else, I guess, a... Uh, a point where the console war warriors will use to be like, aha, look, this only runs at 30 and it runs at 60 on a PC. Why don't you buy a PC, you console plebeians? So it's, it's, it's really strange, right? Cause the thing that people, uh, the thing that I, I, I prioritize would be stability, right? Is like, as long as I'm not like getting jitters and stops or lots of load, load times, like I'm cool with 30. Like I also don't, a lot of times unless it's like in like a really small frame or um you know it's it's a various kind of it's shot in a very specific way i also don't like tend to notice 60 frames per second stuff very much you know watching some of these trailers where they've uploaded high frame rate source footage then you can kind of see um you, you can kind of see it and i think if you have a large enough display and it's a high enough frame rate, you could be talking about an interesting level of immersion that like cinema really doesn't try to flirt with, but every so often, um, you know, if you see some, if you see a, 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 you know, motion tracking is so good texture, um, and, and just rendering is so good. If it, feels more lifelike which is you know the, the unlimited frames of of reality mm-hmm. that that could be really strong immersion but that also means more expensive tvs a new wave of tvs to come out that there's a there's a lot of steps between points a and b but yeah. frames are frames are good frames are good um and when you're playing your uh, when you're playing demon souls at your high frames you can also we finally got a full uh, load out last week or uh, there was some point where they put up a pre-order thing for demon souls and they had this reaper scythe on it and then they took it down and put it up without but we now have a whole digital deluxe edition of demon souls that comes with a bunch of uh stuff this is actually really interesting though because all of the there's two armors uh two weapons a shield and then a bunch of kind of uh, items um these are all original Do, uh, additions. Okay, so the, these are not like things you would normally find in the game. 
No, the yeah, these were not in the original Demon Souls. Um, so, like the enemy that uses this Reaper Scythe is in there, but or the Hoplite Shield is from one of the bosses. Uh, this Bulletarian Royalty Armor, I think, is from the last boss in the game, and you run into Red Eye Knights all the time. But most of this, uh, near as I could tell, most of this stuff is not in the game. These are original creations from Blue Point for Demon Souls, which then opens up an interesting question of: Is this all they added? And then is the rest of it just exactly what Demon Souls was, or have they added enemies, environments, you know, uh, uh, different behaviors? Uh, have they smoothed out the AI on things? You know, um, so. which would you rather have: a faithful recreation or a quality of life, or I don't know, a, a diversion from the original? I I am not generally one for. Um, to to require everything to be one to one the way it used to be because um demon souls has some rough points but then the main thing is i talked about this last week i've played demon souls like a hundred times <laughs> like i know how to beat every boss i know where everything is i know where all the secret locations are so like i'm gonna play this obviously when it comes out but it's not like i'm not chomping at the bit i'm not just like oh my god shut up and take my money because I have a PlayStation 3. It has Demon Souls installed on it. I can play Demon <laughs> Souls right now if I wanted to. Um, so this isn't exactly... I think it's great that this is going to be on the PS5. I'm looking forward to checking it out. The The video that they showed what was like last week or the week before of the kind of the beginning with the um, Asylum Demon and his uh, uh, Vanguard and his weird tentacle nipple things that were really strange looking. Um, it made it look really good, but like all the geometry around all that like ray tracing and lighting and stuff. I've walked up those steps and killed those enemies so many times <laughs> since Demon <laughs> Souls has come out. So um, I, I, I guess the question for, I guess the real question here is Bryce, you're getting a PS five. Are you going to try to play Demon Souls? Oh goodness. No, no, um, no, no. <laughs> those, these are, these are not my games. More power to you if you like them. I did see in, in one of these articles, it did link to like someone had tried, had uh, gone through that tutorial section of Demon Souls on the original game mm -hmm. to try to do a side by side comparison. And it's like, it, it's, it, it's, uh, I don't know that I would say night and day, but it's a, it's a pretty stellar kind of, uh, upgrade you know a lot of like good lighting and atmosphere stuff you get a much better sense of the spaces that you're in if there's any sense to be gained at all but it it, it looks really nice um you wouldn't you wouldn't catch me playing this uh <laughs> ever but cool on you like no. it looks good it looks nice bryce this is the easiest one though <laughs> this is the easiest one <laughs> no thank you oh my god okay Ugh, i did try, i did uh, i the only one of those I've ever played is I played Bloodborne for like a minute because I had PS Now, a PlayStation Now trial, and mm -hmm. you could download it. But and it's fine. It was fine. It was fine. It's Jeff. They're they're, they're good games. <laughs> look, I I, <laughs> I look, Bryce. I, I'm way past the point of being like mad that my friends won't play uh, from software games. I I don't care. <laughs> you know. I I think that when people are like, I don't want to play those games. They're too hard. I'm just like, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Uh, the only thing about it is that when I first got into this, it was with Demon Souls, and I had two friends that had played the hell out of it that then like walked me through, and they did co-op with me and helped me play the game. And I almost feel like this release has made it like obligatory that I need to find like I need to find a new uh, uh, like a, a new intern. I need to find a new student <laughs> and teach them the ways of the Souls games, and then release them out into the world. Like pay it forward. <laughs> So. That sounds really good. I, I and like that's a good way to get into stuff. I uh uh, uh like Tropico for a weird uh, for whatever weird reason I couldn't figure out Tropico on my own, mm -hmm. and I need a friend to like help me play it to figure out what I was doing. So, um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh let's see. We talked about Yakuza, so we can mark that off the list. It's coming in March uh to the PS5, and then PS5. Uh, we also had there's a Sega's partnering up with like a Hollywood company to make a Yakuza movie. Um, this is really confusing because there was a Yakuza movie that was called Like a Dragon that was um, mm 
Mm-hmm. Who's the Ichi the Killer guy? Uh, oh, uh, oh Takeshi Miike. Said... Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure that was him that made the like in 2007 or something. They actually made a Yakuza movie um, called Like a Dragon. That was a a film. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that correctly. That that sounds right. That there was previously a Yakuza movie. Um. But, I mean, of all the video games that could make a good movie, like, Yakuza should be able to make... You should be able to make a good Yakuza movie, I I feel like. I don't know. The things that prick my ears up on this are... This is ho- this is supposedly, per this TGS report, this is a, a Hollywood production of Yakuza, uh, not a Japanese production. And I'm not, not, I'm not... I'm not trying to do one of those things, but... Japanese cinema is lousy with crime gang dramas like this action dramas like it's it's like a bread and butter thing so um that Hollywood okay and also uh, these two companies that they're partnering with 1212 entertainment and wild sheep content you know when you google the name of a company you would hope you could find a website about it or at least an IMDb page that listed more than one released movie ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1212 released scary stories to tell, tell in the dark in 2019. Yeah, you got to pull it up here mm-hmm. and nothing else. So these development deals happen all the time and it, it, right there, there it, it seems like every 12 months or so someone writes up a new article like did you know they're making a sims movie um most of the time these things do not uh, show up in in any way right yeah. uh, the even uncharted right is famously in development hell and this is one that's had it's sony's fucking making it and they got they had tom holland and all these different people attached to it because it takes a long time to go from development to like even filming these things. So this would be really cool. I think there's a lot of people who could make a Yakuza f- film very, very well and very authentically. Mm. I don't know if these are the people to do it, but there's a long time <laughs> for them to find out. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's see. What else do I got here? Um, we talked about, did we talk about this cloud saves oh, on the Xbox series yeah. X? Yeah. We, we talked a little bit about, um, how that's going to be like working perfectly with yeah. no caveats apparently. <laughs> um, so. And like Fallout, this this major Nelson video, this is the one I mentioned earlier. He loads Fallout pretty quick. I don't know if this was a quick resume or what, but he jumps into Fallout like insane. And there have been uh, okay, so it does say quick resume. There's also been um, w- because people have had these these backwards compatible only games available for the Xbox Series uh, for a, a week or so, and like these games load really fucking fast uh like like fallout right fallout loads really takes a really long time to load on consoles they've got like side by sides and it's 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 crazy fast i i think that a lot of people are i think that a lot of people are um are not properly weighting this load time difference like in that demon souls video that came up where at the beginning the character is kind of walking around with these skeletons and kind of these these various characters and he walks up to a little stone and kneels down and then it's like he's in this this the kind of like rotting cathedral castle where he he fights vanguard right that was a load time that was like a two minute load time between like kneeling down at that rock and being inside of that area because it was load times and it made me think about how when I got Skyrim on the PC, the way I played that game was dramatically different because I didn't have to avoid load times anymore, which meant that I could quick travel like all over the place at a whim. It's like, oh, do I need to be over there? Well, I'm not going to like, I don't know, finish this up and wait for this other thing. It's like I can just quick travel between these two towns like that, like just in a second and that it erases this weird friction in a lot of games that would keep you from maybe doing certain other things. Like you you just think of um, load times are going to be applied to saves as well, right? So any game that has a quick save, quick load component means that you can, you know, 
create your own checkpoint, iterate it on it faster because like I think about there's been a lot of games over the years where uh, there'll be like a stealth game or like a, a it's like a Far Cry game, right? Where it's like, oh, you can do stealth, but then when you get seen, all right, we're just going to open up. And one of the reasons that I feel like you might open up is because you don't want to sit there for 90 seconds while the game loads back when you were still in stealth, whereas if these load times get down to the point where we're talking about four seconds to reload a game, then that means that that all that iterative time... I, uh, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. I had this... Hit- th- Hitman, by, by the way, is like a great example of this. Because yes. Hitman on the consoles takes a long time to load mm-hmm. compared to even like modest PC specs where it loads really, really quickly. And yeah, your decision making changes based on knowing what io you have on even just loading and saving games Mm -hmm. yeah i was i i was having this conversation a while back with i think it was my dad where i was talking about how like like i was thinking some of these like like i'm high but i'm not high thoughts where i'm like if anybody who remembers the world when people used to write checks for stuff to to buy things and the amount of time that it took when you were in line behind somebody that was writing a check to to buy their groceries or to buy a TV or whatever right they would have to write everything out and invariably nobody would write it out you think about how much of your life has been saved through debit cards where you're you're just not standing in line like you were going to be standing in line for 5 minutes for eight different purchases over the week and that's like now 40 minutes of your life that you have back because people just go boop 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 boop, and everybody walks out with their thing and i feel like this is Mm -hmm. kind of similar in that like how much time when you have a limited amount of gaming do you spend trying to decide like do i try to do that hitman run perfectly or or do i just go back to the previous save and like well it's going to take 90 seconds i could probably get around here it's going to take a star off my rating instead of instead of trying to get a perfect rating on it or just you know you're playing the witcher you're playing cyberpunk 2077 and instead of having to wait for a few minutes for the game to load between quick travel points you just go instantly and so suddenly all that time that you would have been sitting in your house not playing the game you suddenly are playing the game and it's just like when you start to add all those minutes up over the course of a whole game or all of the games right on the current generations it's like you're suddenly getting a huge gift of time and life from this fast hard drive in this stupid game <laughs> console yeah. Um, yeah so yeah no this is a great point uh let's see what else do we got here uh speaking of um the xbox uh xbox game pass is getting uh ea play november 10th which Last week, somebody uh, accused me of being a uh, Game Pass fanboy, and I'm here to dispute that by saying uh, I'm not potentially a Game Pass fanboy. I am a Game Pass fanboy because between Mm -hmm. Bethesda and Microsoft and EA, like they're starting to stack up a really, really like a powerful value for your $15 a month to the point where I would be shocked if the price of game pass doesn't go up in the next year to at least twenty dollars for ultimate at the very least because the number of games that you are now getting from the number of different publishers like you're not just getting crappy not crappy you're not getting smaller (laughs) less well-known indie games you're not just getting carry in you know you're going to be getting the sims and titanfall and the battlefield and and even if you don't, like the thing about this is with EA Play, even if they don't have the game that you're looking for on it, I believe that when you have EA Play, you also get access to that like 10% off and then get to play it seven days before it comes out. Like they had these mm. programs like Mass Effect, you could play uh, up to 12 hours of it, like four or five days before it came out with Andromeda. So man, there's a lot going on over here. <laughs> I mean, it's. It is a stupid value what you get with Xbox Ultimate, basically, right? Between Game Pass, between what you would have had to pay for live, EA Play, which is like six dollars a month when you when you pay annually. Like it is it, it is the place it is a it is a big hole that Microsoft is dumping a lot of money into. Mm-hmm. And really only Microsoft can do that. This is like you want to talk about like pumping money in to attract people microsoft can do this all damn day and it's 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 very attractive i'll tell you what man i was 
out driving today and I was like, man, I love, because I, because I was reading up for the news stories. I had to take a break and reading up for the news stories. I was like, man, I like Sony, but fuck man, this is, <laughs> it's, it's shocking. It's, it's a sh- shock and it makes, it makes a lot of sense. You get people in, then they, then suddenly they're paying you every month and then they're buying your hardware and they're buying your Bethesda games. Like it makes a lot of sense. It's a very clear business funnel. It's very attractive. Would you consider, since you don't have a 4K TV, would you consider getting a Series S? Because, I mean, they're so cheap. And 250 for the console and then Game Pass on top of that. And, like, it, it wouldn't necessarily be... It, like, it may not be your primary thing, but when you consider all the things that you would be able to get by having access to game, Or I, I guess I don't know. Is your PC... Do you have a gaming PC? I do, I do. This I, I use this for editing, so it's a few years old, but it's got a nine, it's got a nine eighty in it. It's like I I had had Game Pass for PC for a little while there, um, but the Game Pass for PC offering, uh, it turns out, is not nearly as good as the console one. Um, where I think if they have if they have a like particularly interesting lineup, I could see myself either for the Game Pass for PC getting a month or two to play outer worlds or skyrim 2 or whatever they end up doing there um but also like i i could either either an xbox series uh, s or maybe a one x because those are becoming functionally obsolete and and they have all this cross-gen stuff going on right now i i mean i could absolutely see it and like this is this is part of that funnel is making them making such a cheap option that people like me could throw money in and get on get on it you know I, it's a very it's not zero jeff it's nope. not zero for me to do that Mm-mm. but it but it's not exactly uh an 800 dollar geforce 3080 or a 500 dollar ps5 i mean the entry sure. also i mean i just i don't know when they're going to be available again but they also have that what is it like 25 dollars a month subscription series s with game pass mm, all like, access yeah yes. for like two years or something and it's like i how that's so low that for some an entry level i just i keep thinking i've been thinking a lot recently about what do people do that don't have the kind of throwaway money on games like i i get to write all the games off by taxes i have a patreon specifically to buy video games with right but like let's say that you know you're moving out of your parents house for the first time and you have a tv that you saved up but the you know the pc or the console that was your parents and it's like 25 dollars a month for a game console that'll run at 1080p that will run next gen games that at this point will run all the microsoft games probably most of the Bethesda games, a big chunk of EA games, as well as a big chunk of indie games. And, and just for $25 a month, that's a, yeah, God, that's for, a for ah. <laughs> zero, zero percent interest. And also some of those configurations are cheaper than buying retail out of the box. Like, like it, it's, this is, this is the money hat of it all, right? We yeah. talk about like, oh, buying exclusives and whatnot. This is the, this will be the next generation's money hat of like running these services probably at a loss for a long time. Because if you get that person in on a Series S, that's, that's uh, the digital console. So that means you also get them with every game sale because they don't have discs. Mm-hmm. That means you get them with the memory cards because it's a half a terabyte instead of a full terabyte. I mean, you, that's a lifetime customer. If you get someone at that price, that person will stick with you for a really long time. And they're building the library. They're building up the like connection to whatever's in the game pass. They're buying, they're at like, it, it's it's so strong to get a new customer for anything that um, when you have such a pointed uh, uh, use case like that, you can you can hook someone if you have the right price and you can hook them for a very long time. Yep. 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 Um, let's see from there. Uh, ah, yes. A sad story. Um, I was going to say. I had all my transitions in my head, and then I always forget them before I start. So, so speaking of things that come out in November, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 comes out in November, and unfortunately, uh, they're going to be crunching. 
um, CD Projekt Red had said before that they were going to that it was not going to be mandatory crunch before the release of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, yes, <laughs> yes, there is going to be mandatory crunch. Uh, they said they're working their full weekly schedule and then at least one weekend day. Um, I did at least, I mean, I don't know this, you know, it's not like, oh, well, you said this, so everything's cool now. But their studio head did come out and say, I take it upon myself to receive the full backlash for this decision. I know it is in direct opposition to what we've said about Crunch. It's also in direct opposition to what I personally grew to believe a while back that Crunch should never be the answer. But we've extended all possible means of navigating. Uh, but we've it, it extended? Okay. All other possible means of, of navigating this situation. So that's not like, oh, all is forgiven. You took responsibility because it's still going to fuck up a bunch of people's lives for the next month or so but um it is at least nice to see it, so often so many developers and so many game companies just don't say anything about crunch pretend like it doesn't exist and do not comment on it at all it's nice to see somebody mm -hmm. at least commenting in some way about it um um this is also mm, okay uh i i have complicated feelings about this news story because a like uh uh, the the studio head who gave this quote, Adam Badowski, also told investors earlier this year that they would likely have to crunch at the end of this development cycle anyway. Mm -hmm. So it feels like I I recognize that he said one very specific thing, and he very specifically is going up against that. But also, this is now probably time two that he's he said that. Um, the other thing is like uh, so. Uh, I I work in in production. I when you have a deadline. You got a deadline and when you're really close to it, it's hard to move that. You have to set the date and you, you, you have to ship. And I, I think of all of the times to crunch or to have a crunch period, the, the near launch is the time to do it, right? When you talk about the issues of crunch, it's, it's when you talk about large crunch culture right when it's unspoken and everyone when people will look down on you if you don't come in and spend your weekends doing this they spend long nights doing this thing um at least what we have here is a very transparent uh explanation hey we need to finish this thing we got bugs uh this game comes out in six weeks we need you to add an extra day we're gonna pay you for it as uh they also mentioned i i think Crunch is not great. In a perfect world, there is no crunch. But when you have deadlines, when you have a game like this that has been moved around so much, um, when you have a game that is probably for Sony and Microsoft both, really something you're not going to be able to convince either of them to move the date on. Right. Uh, the fact that there's promotion and commercials. Everyone has this date. November 14th. That's the day it comes out. Mm -hmm. you got to be done by the day. Right. Um, I now, if we're talking about six weeks, I think that's reasonable. But also, we still don't know when the next gen versions of this game are going to come out. They've said 2021. Does that mean that they are going to be crunching for months, for many months to get this done? Then, then maybe that's a part of the story. I oh no, no. would frown a little more at. I'm pretty sure that these are coming out day and date on the Xbox Series X and PS5, as well as the PS4 and. Uh, Xbox One PC. I thought that the all versions were coming out um, oh. in November. I, that's what that's what I had read at least. Um, I had okay. I hadn't heard anything that there was going to hmm. be any kind of delay, like a like a dragon type of thing. So um, I don't know. I I hadn't heard that before. Maybe um, maybe uh, maybe my news is old on that. Or in terms of a next gen upgrade or patch post release so i m m maybe i'm uh not quite correct on that i think i pulled 2021 from wikipedia so <laughs> that's mm, I'll, I'll i will take take any credit on that but but i guess where i'm at is like it's it it's definitely just a bad look to explicitly say one thing and to explicitly have that happen um i think in terms of crunch this is a contained instance where people know what this at least have an idea of what the scope of this is right. in a time which, when it's really vulnerable. You got when you have a deadline, it's got to get done. And 
you make it up somewhere else that you know that's just what you have to do it's uh, i mean i was thinking about i mean while you're talking i was and and when i read this article originally i started thinking about it very much kind of in the same terms that you were talking about but the idea that it's like okay so how do you not have to do any crunch right is so okay you're gonna budget like a huge amount of time you're gonna buffer you're gonna budget so much time if you budget your time if you if you if you try to think of like all your development and you say okay if everything goes according to plan we should be releasing on day x right um something will go wrong and then you're gonna need either to to work over time or to push the date further back so you could say, okay, well, maybe make your development time so that you have a huge amount of basically empty space at the end of your development cycle that you can. Which ex- I'm sure publishers love. Right. I'm sure publishers love when you have intentionally blank spaces on. Yeah, but I, I get I get what you're saying. What yeah. You're saying up here. So I don't really know. I don't really know what to do. And I think in this one, it's kind of difficult because I think it would be different if we were. Uh, I think it would be different if Cyberpunk 2077 wasn't going to be. As near as I can tell, like the premier big AAA game of this holiday season. Like, I mean, we have other things that are coming out. I think, you know, Miles Morales is a platform exclusive, but I, I think Cyberpunk is really the big, like, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS5. Like, it's on everything except for the Switch. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that it's 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 also looks like it's being set up as, like, a big, lavish, impressive game that is also highly anticipated so this is one where yeah i think it would be really difficult for them to push it out even into december because you're going to miss the black friday uh craziness i mean you probably could have pushed it a little bit further uh, the i don't know for me it's, i feel like the biggest thing is is it going to be under the tree at christmas so you probably could have pushed into the beginning of december but then you also there's probably also a bunch of bundles that we don't know about that are going to be right in store black friday uh, cyberpunk plus a series uh, branded X, right skinned, yeah. yeah so i don't know uh ta- talking about the next gen stuff just really quick and this is going off of the cyberpunk homepage. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are listing Xbox One, PS4, PC, Stadia, and they say, quote, plays great also on Xbox Series X and PS5. You cannot pre-order those versions at the moment. Um, Interesting. So I think that those are, uh, that's where my, I think next gen, either as a next gen patch or a next gen SKU is maybe still going to be a ways away. But once you get the base game out, then then you then maybe you don't need to crunch. Maybe you could just... I can finally finish this fucking game. And then get it out. That's when people can play it. <laughs> yeah. I bought a friend. I bought a friend a copy of this as like a, I think it was like a Christmas gift last Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, thinking like, hey, have a good Valentine's Day when you're playing this game. And uh, <clears throat> see how that goes. I don't know about you, Bryce. I'm going to buy it on Stadia. I'm going to get it on the Stadia version. <laughs> um, that's that's what I'm going to do. Today. You know, upgrades, you know, no patches. It yeah. just works. I actually, it's funny. I actually signed up for Google Stadia. Uh, I am now paying Google the ten dollars a month because I didn't realize that Stadia has a big like you get all of these games for free. Like you get Hitman Two for free. You get all the Steam World games for free. You get Metro. They've got the. It's like the Epic Game Store where you have to like claim them before they expire. But then you just apparently get to keep them forever. Like they just added. Dead by Daylight and oh, one other one, smaller game. I don't remember what it was, but I've been trying it out, and I like. It's going to be interesting. Like the day that this podcast comes up, um, yesterday, Michael and I did a comparison where we're like, we're going to play Serious Sam Four on Stadia, and then we're also going to play it on my kind of crappy PC, and then we're going to talk about like, would you rather play it? on a kind of crappy PC or with a medium grade internet connection over Stadia. And then also is Serious Sam for a bad game that it's not good to do this comparison with. So <laughs> Yeah. But and and those free games are with the like that's a that's the subscription side of Stadia. You can just buy games a la carte if you wanted to yes. and not pay them a certain amount, right? And now does that work like um PlayStation Plus or Games Worth Gold, where you do have to stay a subscriber to keep those games? I don't know yet. I don't 
think okay. so, but I don't. I know. bet no. I bet. I bet probably no one knows. I bet with fucking Stadia, who <laughs> does anyone even try? No one knows. <laughs> yeah, I actually think. I mean, like this is a little bit of a spoiler alert for Rage Select, but um, I'm. I, I found out that my internet connection sucks a whole bunch of uh, crap because. Uh, it turns out the Time Order has some kind of gigabit Ethernet out here that blows the socks off of what I'm already paying. I just don't have the money for like the $200 installation fee right now to to do that. But um, I am think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to find one of those Chromecast Founders Editions as well with the, the special controller and the wired Chromecast. I think I'm going to upgrade my internet and I'm going to say... Hey, because I really want this stuff to work. It's just that right now the idea of spending $60 on a game only on Stadia is like madness. It's pure, unadulterated madness. So yeah. I don't know. But I, I'm thinking that this I'm thinking this holiday season, I want to do a little bit of work in the next few months on my stuff. And if we are able to get the next gen versions, I might make the investment of being like we're going to play Cyberpunk on a PS5 and then we're going to play Cyberpunk on like as best as I can make a Google Stadia run and then we're going to compare those two videos and say how different are these two videos. So, Yeah, that, that would be really interesting to see, right? If the whole premise of these is like, hey, pay us and it's going to look the best it possibly can be mm-hmm. minus any compression. Like, yeah, I think that would be really interesting. And now that Stadia kind of... Ha- is out now that Stadia exists, you know, it, I, I, yeah, that, that seems like a, I, I will watch your video, sir. I, I think that the worst thing that's been happening with Stadia right now is that I don't think that Google has any idea how to sell Stadia. Um, like they've got a seven day free trial, but they should just give you like, you should be able to go to their website and they should have some game. It should be like destiny or something where like without even signing into Google, you can play it for 30 minutes just to, just to see. Right. And then yeah. every commercial they have should be like, go try 30 minutes of Destiny and see what you think because it's ridiculously easy to sign up for this $10 a month. I got like 20 games off of them that I could just play whenever. And I've been bringing it up. Like, you know, it launches in a flash, it closes down in a flash. When it works, it works pretty well. Anyway. Yeah, this is not a stadium advertisement. Actually, I'm going to start uh, taking some of these news stories out of here too because some of these were not the best news stories in the world. So, um, <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, we're going to go down to... Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of Stadia, this is this is maybe a good uh, transition. Um, Google has a new Chromecast device that they put out that they announced with the right. 5G uh, Pixel phones. And apparently it doesn't have Stadia support right now, which... I, I think I actually read an article where somebody managed to sideload Stadia onto one of these things. Like they managed to get it <laughs> hooked up into some debug mode and put Stadia on it and it ran without a problem. But again, this goes back to what I was just saying. Google seems to have no clue how to make people want this thing that apparently they put a lot of money into because, I mean, come on, man. Because right now the only Chromecast per this white paper is is the Chromecast Ultra, which they discontinued because they're making the Chromecast with Google TV. Mm -hmm. This... Which I, I I'm pretty sure you can you can still buy a Chromecast Ultra, but you have to buy the hundred dollar Founders Edition that comes with the controller as well, which is a ridiculous barrier to entry for uh, most people. I'm more surprised that there aren't more TVs that have this as a built in app, right? That you can't, you know, my TV has, my LG TV doesn't have it as a thing that I could, I mean, I guess you'd have to have some kind of Bluetooth connection for the controller, but. Um, well, the controller is Wi-Fi, so the controller hooks goes directly to the internet, so it doesn't connect to your device, it goes to the, to the Stadia server. I guess if you wanted so, to use like a, you know, like an Xbox controller, you could just sync yeah. those over Bluetooth, but yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, I, it's bizarre. I mean, look, hey. Uh, Google doing weird, crazy branding stuff that's breaking a lot of stuff. Like, <laughs> what else is now? <laughs> I just, I, I wish that whoever worked their marketing, that they would fire them because all the marketing for Stadia <laughs> has just been like, woo, so kooky. Look, the name of it, Stadia. And it's like, you are not telling anybody. You're trying to sell a brand that has no power behind it. And you need to establish why this would be a good thing for people to go try out first. So. Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, but guess what? We're going to go do it again because Amazon is also doing this. Uh, they announced Luna, their new cloud gaming service, which apparently is going to work on anything with a Fire TV, which is good. Uh, PC, Mac, iPhone app, iPad app, Android app. They're going to have their own low latency controller. Um, they're going to have a subscription channel where you can get some games to play, which to me is the most important thing for all these because you got to prove it works first. And this is uh, $6 a month. They had a list of games that included Resident Evil 7, Control, Panzer Dragoon, Plague Tale Innocence, The Surge 2, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair, Iconoclast, Grid, Abzu, and Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Um, I don't know. This, uh, okay. So Stadia, the tough thing about Stadia is that there's this huge price barrier, right? You're either buying games a la carte or you're subscribing to Stadia to get access to their kind of weak library where my understanding from the way that it looks with this Luna thing is that you can only access these games. You're the way that you access games is by subscribing to channels. So you subscribe to Luna plus and that gets you the games that you just mentioned Jeff with a game pass type service. Mm. They mentioned that there's going to be an Ubisoft channel where you can play the Ubisoft games. And so I think that this, I think that's the perfect business model to pair with stream, a, a streaming only service. Say, you know, look, just get the controller, play it on your devices and we'll keep giving you some sort of game. And people probably won't be too picky if the whole idea of this is that it looks really good and it costs way less, um, I, I think that makes that that's really smart. And I also have a suspicion that the fact that they call it Luna plus is as the thing you're subscribing to makes me think that with the, uh, Amazon Twitch, uh, Amazon, uh, the Twitch prime slash Amazon gaming rebrand that they did recently makes me think that a smaller version of Luna will be like a prime benefit like buy the controller and this month you can play the panzer dragoon and so maybe there's just one or two rotating games that you just get for free Mm -hmm. with prime like that makes a that if i was amazon that would be something i would heavily look at as being the way to do this because what it's like what you said you need people to get in the door you need them to open up a browser and just be able to play assassin's creed really really fast what I was actually just thinking that the uh, I didn't even think about this before, but the more interesting thing that could be really fascinating here is if you're running, you know, the way that the streaming works, right, is you're sending the controller to the servers and then the server is streaming the game back to you. But if this is integrated with Twitch, technically, couldn't it stream the game back to you, but also to an audience with like if you plugged because there is a microphone button on here if you have a plug-in microphone or something where you could go from basically zero to twitch streamer and that the stream coming to your twitch viewers isn't it doesn't have to go through your own hardware it's coming directly off of whatever server is doing the rendering the same way that the game is could mean that the people watching get way lower latency way higher quality stream because none of it has to go through your pipeline all the way back to Twitch's server. Mm. That could be really, I mean, that would be the sort of thing where like, as long as they keep the latency low on your side of the control, you, somebody like me might be more than willing to take like a slight lag on the control if I don't have to worry about tweaking the, the bitrate settings on my OBS for six hours. If basically you just, if this is basically baby's first Twitch stream where you can buy the controller, the service and then um, any microphone off of Amazon, have it show up, plug it in, make a Twitch account and boom, you're like good to go. You can start streaming Panzer Dragoon at a higher quality than I could do with my crappy connection here. That could be really interesting. Yeah. That could be really fascinating. Yeah. That's, that's something that they haven't, I mean, they haven't talked much about Luna at all, but I think that's something that Stadia has wanted to do where, you know, you could do the same thing, right? You can say, just start broadcasting and it'll send it to you. YouTube gaming, whatever. Right. I wonder what that looks like in terms of like, well, do the AWS servers for Luna, how connected are they to the AWS servers for Twitch? Right. And what could, can you reduce that latency? Twitch has its own processing time. Um, And so with Twitch, if you have good latency, you can be like two to six seconds behind Mm -hmm. YouTube. It's even longer than that. But 
uh, yeah, I think that would be like a really cool thing of say like, hey, also don't worry about streaming. We will send out a nice 4K file or we will give you, you know, lower encodes for people who have bandwidth issues. Like, I think that could be another strong sell for someone. Like you mentioned, like maybe a aspiring Twitch streamer who, yeah, buys a controller and a headset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it could totally work. Uh, let's see. Um, we had... Oh, yes. Speaking of, of horror. No, uh, the, there was a trailer this week. I, I was unsure where to put this. Uh, Netflix is making another one of these janky uh, CGI Resident Evil movies. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, which might be one of the worst titles for anything that I've ever heard. Um, and so far, we've seen uh, Jill Valentine getting in, in, being in a spooky house and Leon Kennedy's floppy hair uh, in the daytime. And that's it. Do do you have you watched any of the Resident Evil horrible CGI movies, Bryce? Uh, no, I was just going to ask how they were, but I think you, <laughs> I think you've jumped the gun on that. So, <laughs> so these are not because uh, I look Resident Evil is scary to me. I'm I, you're not going to catch me finishing one of those games. I'm sorry, I'm a baby and I need color and music and everything. Um, so I would I would watch like a cg version of resident evil 7 right i would watch uh uh, i would watch a version of that where it's just it just does it just does it for me i this and and the cg looks looks kind of nice in this in this trailer um it's more of a teaser so we don't see too too much um i could see what you're googling and i think i know the (laughs) <laughs> the cutscene you're trying to pull up with it's from, the gunfight from the previous one where Chris and that guy are basically just like running weird tight circles around each other with handguns shooting at each other's face, but somehow they never managed to They're connect. Constantly missing. Yeah. They fire hundreds of rounds. I yeah, <laughs> I I see that uh, in the past week. I thought that was from one of the games. I assumed that that was from like Resident Evil Six or something. One of those not great games. That was a 2017. Uh, yeah. Resident Evil Vendetta, oh, okay. Vendetta uh, which is uh, absolutely oh, no, mute here. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's just it's so silly. Anybody, somebody put this on Twitter last week, kind of around the same time that this had been uh, put out, and they were just like, "Jesus, Resident Evil, what, what even is going on in this clip of these two men? They're like." two feet away from each other firing billions of bullets and just dodging them all and it's so ridiculous um i yeah i've tried to watch these in the past and i think they get a little bit more hung up in the whole i guess it's one of those things it depends on how far you go back in the resident evil lore right like resident evil one is has the weird umbrella stuff that comes up and then Resident Evil 2 like the further that you have to pretend the further you have to go down the Resident Evil timeline the more ridiculous this stuff gets and then suddenly it's Resident Evil 5 and you know Chris Redfield is punching like Super Wesker inside of an active volcano uh, or Resident Evil 6 where Leon is shooting like a a G-Virus Tyrannosaurus in a natural history museum or something um so I don't know. I mean, I, I actually just realized. Now, now, okay. Now, but now what about this, Jeff? Okay. Instead of playing 40 hours and trying to piece all that shit together, you just had a TV series and it just said all of the stuff and then it, you, you could turn it off and go and watch something else when you're done. Movies aren't TV sh- or movies aren't video games and video games aren't movies. It feels different to do a thing in a video game than it does to watch. Uh, I like I, it's one of sure. those things where I like I should probably just watch the Persona 5 anime instead of n- holding out some kind of weird hope that I'll get around to playing the 90 hour RPG. But like it's different when you do it yourself. I- um, and also, this is not a movie. This is a seas- a series. Oh, I didn't At actually realize that. At least my understanding is that this is a series. So it could be a thing where maybe they have a better chance to pay stuff out. But you know, who knows, right? Who who knows with any CG thing? Uh, but Amazon, or not Amazon, Netflix has had an interesting track record with CG stuff recently. Well, I guess it's a wait and see thing. Did you watch the Dragon's Crown? But that was the last one that came out just like a Crown? couple weeks ago. That's a Capcom game. I believe it was a Capcom game. It was like kind of like uh, uh, D- Dark Souls that was on the PS3, Xbox 360 era, and they made a season. Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma, not Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown's oh, the uh, Vanillaware game. 
No, I haven't. Is it is it good? Have you seen any of it? I don't really. I'm not a big fan of CG anime, so I don't yeah. tend to watch those. But uh, mm. let's see. All right, we got some trailers here. Godfall had a story trailer, which was kind of. I don't. Did you watch this one, Bryce? Um, I did watch this one. I, you know. Um, do you care about Godfall okay, yet? I, do you care about Godfall can yet? I, <laughs> okay. Can I rant about this for just a second? What oh. the. F- the fuck are they trying to do with godfall here like i'm glad that there's a story trailer now Mm -hmm. because they've gone very far out of their way to try to make us avoid the uh, recognize recognizing that godfall is a third person moba like they're they're, they 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 they're doing all this oh man you get points and there's a big civil war and the guy the bad guy tricked us like this trailer is an artifice of a story mm-hmm. this is, you might be tempted in thinking like this is describing a story or a trajectory of anything no 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 this is just there was a bad guy and he fooled us and i'm going to get my revenge like that's that's it this this uh, <laughs> this is a very this is a very pretty way to disguise us from the fact that this is a f- fucking moba this is like a follow-up uh, what was the other gearbox um battleborn third person moba battleborn you remember battleborn because i think that's gonna be the same fucking thing i don't think battleborn wasn't a moba though was it it was just like a overwatchy clone it didn't have like creeps and uh uh didn't have the same like i did did it um i thought battleborn was like a third per, like an over the shoulder moba game Maybe I'm just not remembering Battleborn. Who could blame me for not being able to remember <laughs> Battleborn? I, I think the most telling thing about this particular trailer, though, was that... Okay, so this trailer is talking about... The, first off, they start with this dumb lore, and I don't understand what any of it means because everybody's wearing a, a animal mask. Um, mm-hmm. So there's like a guy with a wolf mask and a guy with a lion mask, and there's this voiceover about how, like, we never saw the betrayal of... Uh, Cardin of Zlack or whatever his name is coming and blah, 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 blah. Like uh, for a while we were brothers in arms and we fought together and everybody was saying, I thought that all of the voiceover was from the wolf guy. I thought the wolf guy was the good guy and the lion guy was the bad guy. But then when the wolf guy betrays him and he stabs him in the back and at the very end of the trailer, he throws the lion guy into the water and quote unquote leaves him for dead. And the final thing is the guy turning around and putting on the lion mask, right? That's the lion mask, not the wolf mask. The, the, the lion guy is the good guy, not the wolf guy. Who's the bad guy? Is that... <laughs> Well, I don't, no one knows. No one fucking knows. Because, hey, guess what? They mention, they do say his name, which is like Cargos or something. But you're right. Like, I definitely had that. Because, man, Jeff, <laughs> I'm telling you now that this is this is a, a very pretty trailer for a game that does not have a story. That if this game had a story, that big scene where they're all like, oh, yes, the, everyone is is back joined together that scene wouldn't just all be other knights it would look like people it would look like citizens where anything this is all an artifice so that you have a million knights that could respawn into whatever bullshit fantasy story they're pulling together here but but this there's (laughs) the reason this says nothing is because you can't pull anything out of this yeah you can't you're not gonna you don't this is nothing. This is this is nothing. It's, this it, is paper mache. It's a thing that happens all the time in video games. Like I don't know who either one of these people are. As a human being, I tend to relate to faces which I can't see because they're covered with cyber armor masks to the point where I didn't know who the good guy was. Like I was literally rooting for the bad guy until it became clear that it was like, ah, that was the day when the betrayal was complete. No, I, like, oh, you were betrayed. I was supposed to be on the lion guy's side. Because I don't know. Like, they didn't indicate who the lion guy was. you see a lot of the wolf guy. Yeah. You see a lot of the wolf guy, too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. No, you... <laughs> this is a whole other thing. I didn't even recognize that. Uh, 
uh, man, and like, fuck, and, and the, and this like, game's gonna be so bad. I'm just, it's I'm, gonna be so bad. I'm just gonna say, I'm just, is this is like, this is such a nerdy, like, this is something nobody should ever do with Godfall. In the opening part, they talk about how, like, this guy was the great deceiver and he deceived all of us. And then there is a scene of Lion Guy, like, holding up Wolf Guy's hand with a sword. Now, in storytelling, that would seem to indicate coming right after the, like, he was duplicitous, that you would think that the Lion Guy was like, like pridefully elevating wolf guy to keep his deception a secret like the, what about this scene indicates who is the bad guy at all and then as it goes on it's just less and less clear who the fucking bad like one of them could have been ugly for god's sake or like green or like hunched over or i, I like anything um there are a million mm-hmm. visual cues to tell you who the bad guy is and this thing has none of them it has zero of them so if if there was a story here they maybe would have told us what the betrayal was or what the what caused i don't know this these armies to rift into two or any any number of concrete details um that are not being put on display here in the quote cinematic intro so you know if we if we call this a teaser then all right put it on the pile but man this game's not going to be any good (laughs) it's not it's got all of the it's got all the things that you would put in a thing if the thing was not any good sorry I just, I just wonder if this is going to be. No, I, get, I was going to say if this is going to be the end of Gearbox, it's not going to be the end of Gearbox. But I mean, I wonder if this is. They're just going to go back to basically doing um, more. But they're going to do Borderlands Four after this because I feel like nothing they've made outside of Borderlands has managed to hit over the last four or five years. I mean, you had Battleborn, oh, at the uh, uh, Bullet Storm with Duke Nukem edition that was a silly thing. I. I don't know, aliens, colonial marines, like it's kind of just been one thing after another outside of Battleborn for Gearbox, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, um, for Gearbox Publishing, so Gearbox is publishing this. They have Godfall. Uh, they did World of Warships, which if that's like any of the other ship games, maybe very popular. They did that. They've done some VR stuff. Um, oh, they published uh, Hello Neighbor, which is fucking major. Uh, Astroneer. Risk of Rain, Banner Saga. There, there's, there are a good number of hits here for Gearbox publishing. publishing. But okay. Gearbox de- development has its own uh, story. Okay. <laughs> well, speaking of story, we also had the Assassin's Creed Valhalla story trailer. Um, this was interesting. This was interesting. Did you in- notice how this had concrete details and told you like what was going on in the story and where it might go? Yes, I totally did. Uh, I also noticed that there was something that I feel like I wish they would have told me sooner is that apparently like the the assassins like visit the Vikings early on and it's like, oh, okay. Is there a reason? Because okay, in the early part, there's a a point where um, a bunch of hooded people with like crosses on their cloaks and and hoods like show up to hang out and suggest to the vikings that they should go to england and then at the very 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 end of the trailer the main character um like puts an assassin hood up over his viking do and like indicating very briefly that they are going to be an assassin and it's like previously this didn't seem to have very much direct connection to the assassin's creed to the actual assassins and templars like it was just like oh these vikings they're out of they have to leave their homeland they're trying to establish a new homeland a village your raiding parties etc um but outside of the fact that the main character had a hidden blade that was not hidden uh it, there didn't seem to be anything connecting this to the actual assassins of the previous games and i think i feel like this is the first time i've ever seen anybody with a a hood that looks like an assassin in any of these trailers for valhalla um interesting uh i i you know i don't know enough about the assassin's creed lore to get that i i i could tell that they like make a point of that final shot of the trailer where i i guess that's the main character has uh uh, just is in a hood and I kind of thought oh maybe that's a guy from one of the other games which doesn't make any sense because these games are all hundreds of years apart um, 
but yeah. all right. Yeah, I, 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 I really, um, I, yeah, I, I have a hard time knowing what because it, it did seem like they were not putting a lot of emphasis on that in in some of the more recent games. I did think that this was an interesting uh, trailer. It really kind of sets up, you know, who, uh, who these different, uh, you know, uh, basically kings of the of these city states um that the vikings have to try to fell uh it and historically it made me go look up uh, uh if the vikings uh do or don't conquer england so um spoiler alert if you want <laughs> to find out about history <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, a lot of this though i mean as i've said before i need to I'll, I'll give this one a try just like i gave the last was a try the last few haven't hit with me i'm not a fan of ubisoft's weird open world rpg aesthetic mechanic um i feel like it always comes off as a little rushed and, and cheapo so but we'll see i don't know um let's see what else do i have in these trailers because we're already out of time uh do, did you have any thoughts about sack boy's big adventure i'm surprised it took them this long to make a, a sack boy game it looks really cute if it looks like if it plays like unravel no not unravel tearaway if it plays like tearaway which is a fantastic platformer game then this will be great i think the big thing that i took away from this was that they they said that they're not going to have the creation engine elements in it it's just going to be a, a straight third person action game so it'll be interesting to see if the brand has become strong enough to kind of stand on its own um it's adorable i really am a big fan of this weird transformers battleground uh, game that's XCOM Transformers, like a turn-based strategy game with a bunch of Transformers in it. Just because, you I you know, <laughs> I I'm just I've played a lot of third-person action crappy Transformers games, and I'd like to try a crappy strategy Transformers game. <laughs> um, a lot of it is just going to depend on if the, the if there's a story, if the story is any good, and then how good the actual. Um, like it kind of looks like garbage, but the if the combat it looks oh is good. It looks like a mobile game. It looks it looks like it, it looks like someone said Fortnite's popular. Let's just make the uh, an XCOM version of that. There's like no shadows in this game, which is like bizarre. All of the UI is right all around the edges, which like looks like a phone game. I. It, it, maybe and you don't need a lot for a strategy game, but f- holy fuck, man! Is this trans? Is this, this is Transformers? Right? Like this is not GoBots. This is this is the real the real deal. I, I, I think that the I think Skeptical. maybe maybe the reason I, I I all of what you just said is true, but I think that by not having the shadows, by everything being kind of low poly and and light, that it is a little bit more reminiscent of like G one old animated Transformers as opposed to you know any of the later iterations of transformers but i don't know you are correct it does 100% look like a phone game on the other hand i'm a sucker for a strategy game so we'll, we'll i don't know we'll see uh let's see uh prehistoric kingdom looks like jurassic world but i showed it to my friend matt frank who is a dinosaur aficionado and he started spitting out a whole bunch of different types of animals i've never heard of and was like oh my god it was like they actually did research into getting some of these things to look the way that we now think that they were supposed to look as opposed to making them look like um jurassic park so um i'll probably this is really cool this this looked a lot like um zoo planet did mm-hmm. you did you think it look it looks like uh, enough where it made me think like well okay so this is going to be early access but you're going to get play zoo planet right now and it, it's it, it's i'm interested to see what they do you know if they have very like realistic dinosaurs and maybe it's more specifically about like how do you how would you house dinosaurs and not have it be a michael crichton film mm-hmm. like i think that, that that's that's okay then maybe that's that's a part of it but except they couldn't they couldn't resist themselves at the end by having the the t-rex getting out of the enclosure and roaring at the camera (laughs) like we we had to do the jurassic park uh uh thing right at the very end so oh of course uh and then i think you said you had some did you have some thoughts about dynasty warriors nine empires my okay my thought on this teaser and it's a teaser so you can just throw it away immediately it doesn't mean anything Mm. um my thought of which we don't see in this teaser is like the, we talked about like the dynasty warriors formula like it's siege battles just p- 
put a lot of guys on screen and let me fight a lot of guys. Um, I, I would want to see what is it that you can only do on the current technology or whatever to make dynasty warriors feel impressive and like swelling because if I, you know, I've only played a handful of dynasty warrior games on many generations past, but just wow me with that. Right. Like wow me with either the number of guys on screen or the lighting or whatever. Um, and this trait, this teaser very specifically where a guy walks around and mountains pop up around him is not it. You know, this is clearly a pre-rendered thing, not important, not gameplay, anything. Well, then if I remember correctly, wasn't Dynasty Warriors 9 the one that everybody hated? Because it's like they took out a bunch of stuff and you had to do microtransactions to get certain characters. And it was like a more of an open world game. It wasn't like a battlefield. It was like you were literally running between different places. And I thought the Dynasty Warriors 9 was the one that everybody hated. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the one that everybody hated. And then I didn't, I always get this confused, but like every Dynasty, most of the Dynasty Warriors games have had an Empire spinoff where it's Dynasty Warriors, but then also you do like a pretty hefty strategy slash base building element to it. So there was like Dynasty Warriors 8 and then Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires where they took like the Dynasty Warriors was almost like the the combat engine. And then after they released that, they went back and created this like civilization style, big map building, moving resources around. And then when the two armies clash, then you go play Dynasty Warriors between them. Um, oh, so, OK. I did. I did not realize that because I know that there's already like weird numbering with Dynasty Warriors and the Shin Muso uh Japanese titles. I did not realize that this was also an expansion to the existing game. Okay. Or a different take. Okay. That's like weird. That's spin really been off series sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's even weirder. That's okay. Whatever. Just <laughs> fuck man. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's wrap it up really quickly. Uh, Mass Effect trilogy is going to be coming out in 2021. It seems like they need a little bit more time to work on it. Um, there was an insider that basically said that it seems like they're not happy with it. So they want to spend a little bit more time working on it before they even announce it, which is a good thing for EA and Bioware to learn. If you need more time, take more time and then put out a game that we all want. So, um, last year, last year, last week, we had a story about a uh, potential Metal Gear remake uh, that might have been uh, it's just a bum rumor because Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, Substance, both are all three of them were weirdly released on the PC through GOG last week. Um, I know that Metal Gear Solid had a PC release because I have the physical discs from that game. Uh, I think that mm-hmm. Substance also had one, but it's just kind of strange to see this coming out now. Mm-hmm. My understanding is that these are pretty much those old PC ports, mm-hmm. um, which means they will be they have their own flavor of jank. But I think they will also work with the uh, fan developed patches to make those games better. So okay. uh, that's. Uh, Google it if you're looking for that information. That's my understanding. And they needed to put uh, Metal Gear Solid through one of those weird, like those 4K AI upresers that they've been using on like Final Fantasy and stuff. Gets more texture. Oh, that'd be cool. But keep the keep the faces like low poly, (laughs) and so you have a super high detail, you know, uh, eyes, and then they're on like fucking Minecraft Steve face. (laughs) (laughs) It's a horror show. Um... We got a release date for Pokemon Sword and Shield. That's October 22nd. And uh, I cut everything uh, else. DLC. Oh, the DLC. Yes. Uh, the uh, yeah. Tundra DLC. And Cyber- Keanu Reeves tells you go buy Cyberpunk 2077. There was nothing fun this week for me to put. Usually I try to put something wacky at the end here. And this was like the wackiest thing I found this week was Keanu Reeves doing a commercial for Cyberpunk 2077. Um, Is is Keanu in this game a lot? I know they showed him off at the Xbox event and they mentioned he would be like, have his own, um, you know, his own quest line, whatever. Uh, but I saw one of these articles today mentioned like cyberpunk 2077, which is starring Keanu Reeves. Like, well, he's in it a bit. I don't, I I guess I don't know. I don't watch their update videos and, and, and whatnot, but, um, it was, strange i mean they know the power of keanu reeves in 2020 for sure and like more power to you but 
Interesting. From my... Uh, I, I've watched all the Night City Wires, and I feel like they haven't done anything specific about Keanu, but from my own thoughts on it, from the original trailer, I feel like this game is going to start. You're going to get some experimental biotech. The company that you steal it from is going to hunt you down and kill you and leave you for dead at that point johnny silverhand shows up as like a ghost in that tech that is now trapped inside you johnny mnemonic style and then you have to recreate your face so that you aren't recognized by the corp that you ripped off and then i would be willing to bet that he probably exists for like the main story thread but that anytime you get off of the main beat for the story and this is 100% 100% conjecture from me, but like, you know, he can't just be in like two quests and then they plaster him all over everything and have him come out. I mean, I guess he could, but I don't feel like CD Projekt Red is that kind of company to to dangle mm. Keanu in front of you and not give you at least a little bit of Keanu for your, your $60. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that is it. That was that was a long podcast, Bryce. That was a long podcast. So much for a regular show. Yeah. So much for the the regular rate slack. Yep. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to manage to shoehorn some questions back into the end of this motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> tell the people at home where they can find you when you're not here talking to me. Sure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brycus B R Y C A S. And uh, if you want to watch my Hitman challenge series, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it's called Bryce Another Day, and I do it on twitch.tv slash night attack on Friday nights, where I am on a quest to 100% uh, Hitman 2, which uh, seems um, like a big undertaking. But I'm going to try, certainly. Uh, so that's uh, twitch.tv slash night attack. Thank and you. And you're up to the third. You're up to the third area? No. You're still on I'm still Sapienza? In I'm still in Italy. I'm still in Sapienza. Okay. All That's right. A big, it's a big map. It's a big map, Jeff. It's, it's a, a really big map. It's a very big map. Did you find the Mario Brothers yet? You found the Mario Brothers down in the sewer? No, I haven't. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Oh, look at <laughs> that. That was fun. Leave you on that. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.